But no, nah, that's good. Like you can, you should be able to watch something and be all right, all right without disrupting it. All right, good evening everyone and welcome to the grand finale of the 2023 CCFL season. We are up in uh, Mount Holly, North Carolina for the championship game, the last game of the year coming up, uh, barring any all-star game, but uh, that's besides the point. Should have a really, really good matchup on hand tonight. The number one and number two offenses and defenses in the league going at it here tonight. The Electric City Chargers and the Catawba County Hornets both entering this game at 10 and one, both coming off dominant wins in their only playoff game so far. Both teams received buys after being the number one and two seeds in the postseason. The Hornets are coming off a 28 nothing win over the Charlotte Bengals, the sixth seed while the Chargers are coming off an 18 to six win over the five, no, it was the four seeded, I believe, Fayetteville, or not the Fayetteville Ducks, the ANDP Ducks, who are also from North Carolina. I got my Ducks mixed up there. Teams just headed out to midfield for the coin toss a moment ago, and looks like we've got our result already. And the Hornets are going to receive the opening kick, so the Chargers will get it to start the third quarter. Hopefully things will get underway here in just a moment. I'm really looking forward to this one. Should be, a, if nothing else, a very interesting contrast of offensive styles. If you've watched any Chargers game on the channel so far, you know they are a ground and pound style team. They don't throw it very often. They will run it straight down the throat of anybody that lines up against them. Well, uh, well, as meanwhile, the Hornets, at least from what I've seen on film, are definitely more of a passing team. They like to establish the run more so than, you know, say your Mike Leach offenses might have in college football. They will run it, but they'll use a lot of uh, 10 personnel, four wide receivers, one running back. They're going to spread the ball out, a lot of quick passes underneath. They're going to make this Chargers defense try and tackle in space and maybe take a couple of shots downfield. Again, I just, uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am really, really excited for this one. It's been a long time coming. It feels like these two teams have been on a collision course all season despite their week three matchup going the way of the Chargers. That was a 16 to eight victory at Catawba, but that was at this point, at least two months ago, maybe even three. It's ancient history to both these teams. Both sides have been talking a lot of smack leading up to this one and I mean the game between the Hornets and the Chargers never came up in anything I saw any of the conversations I saw players having online none of them mentioned that the Chargers won so I, that signals to me that that is ancient history both these teams really feel like they found their groove the Chargers actually did drop a game at the very end of the season against the Union County Hornets but they had already clinched the number one seed in the playoffs by that point so it wasn't a must win game by any stretch of the imagination while the Hornets the Catawba Hornets I should say have not lost a game all season other than that week three loss against the Chargers so we're gearing up for kickoff Andre Talley set to send this one away for the Hornets one thing to keep an eye on as the Chargers Get ready to boot this one is that they did give up a kickoff return touchdown in their game against the ANDP Ducks last week. It was the only touchdown the Ducks scored as Tally's kick. Oh, has some serious distance going all the almost to the back end zone. And the Chargers have some gunners running downfield early. They kind of outrun the return man and then tackle is made just past the 25 yard line. So it was a little bit of over pursuit there and we've already got some jawing. Well, I'm not, I don't know if I'd call that jawing or just the, the Hornets all got real fired up real fast. So usually that means like, oh, there's a flag, a late hit or something. But I, don't, I, I think they just started, I, I don't think anything happened. I think they were just trying to pump themselves up. Oh, check that. We do have a flag down on the field. Yeah, quick disclaimer. Uh, if I do miss anything glaringly obvious, in my defense, I do have a speaker right in front of me that's blocking my view but I will uh, try and stay on top of things as best I can. First down and 10 coming up from the somewhere, I suppose. Looks like they got the ball spotted at the 27 yard line initially, but the referees are talking about this one. They were talking a lot before the pregame, like before they sent the teams out for the coin toss as well. Yeah, not quite sure what the holdup is. I mean, it's. I didn't see what the flag was for. It looked to be in the area of maybe an illegal block in the back. Yeah, they are really trying to sort this one out. I guess hell, both sides are <laughs> just kind of waiting on something to happen. I think they're both ready to go. It's just 
the officials need to Again, I'm not totally sure what they are sorting out, if it was just that one penalty or if there were multiple flags they're trying to discuss. Yeah, really, it's never fun for me specifically when things freeze up like this when the referees are talking because there's nothing to talk about. I feel like I just kind of have to sit here and twiddle my thumbs and talk about, oh, you, what'd you think of the rain we got last Tuesday or something like that? Because, I mean, especially after one kickoff, there's just not a lot to discuss here. I did mention that these teams have the number one and number two offenses and defenses in the league. And what I mean by that is that the Hornets have the number two scoring offense and the number one scoring defense. They've only allowed 66 points through 11 games, which is unreal. Six points allowed per game on average, while the Chargers enter averaging a little more than 34 points scored a game and only give up about nine on average going to be really interesting to see if the defenses and the offenses take over this one. I think both teams feel confident in their ability to keep up either in a track meet or just a pushing and shoving match. And are you kidding me? We've got whistles again? I mean, they're talking for two or three minutes. Did they, did they not get it figured out? Ball spotted on the 42 now in the area of a personal foul called against the Chargers which would explain why the Hornets got so fired up after the whistles blew on that kickoff return, but I don't know what the holdup is now. It seems like a scoreboard issue, but the scoreboard looks fine to me, and we finally got our ready for play. Fingers crossed we can get a play off. Four wide receivers in the set for the Hornets. One running back. Six men in the box of the Chargers. The Hornets try to run. Going to bust this one to the outside. Got some room out past the 50, and the tackle is made past the line to gain. So one play, one first down so far for the Hornets. Out past midfield. You're going to see the Chargers run with a single high safety look in a loaded box a lot. Their base package is a nickel defense, and they seldom come out of it. They uh, experimented a little bit last week against the Ducks. They tried some 3-3-5 stuff, some 3-4 sets with only three down linemen. That's not really their bread and butter. They kind of switched it up around uh, in the later stages of that game. They were running their base defense and uh, either due to practice time, just general personnel, whatever the reason, their defense did uh, – run things a bit more smoothly when they shifted back to their base package, but against four wide sets like they're gonna face here, provided Catawba's quarterback can get time to throw and he's got time to run here, breaks one tackle, out past the 30, into the open field. This one's gonna be close, can they catch him? No, they cannot. No flags, touchdown Hornets. So I'm out here talking about the passing game and the Hornets say, never mind that, take it straight to the end zone. Man, a 40-yard-plus touchdown on a – I don't want to quite call that a quarterback draw because there was a fake handoff on that. It's kind of a lead draw, I guess you could say. You fake the handoff, use your running back that you fake the handoff to as a blocker, and then just tell your quarterback to go get as many yards as he can, and he got as many as he possibly could on that one. First down and 10 turns into a PAT attempt for the Hornets on top 6-0 early and striking very quickly as well. Yeah, 13.48 and counting here in the first quarter. Again, we talked about that contrast to Styles. Uh, the Chargers can score quickly, but I would, I'd be a little surprised if the Chargers put points on the board as fast as the Hornets did. They're definitely more of a ball control style team as the Hornets gear up for a two point conversion. Uh, and they have to burn a timeout. Ooh, that could come back to bite them later. You never, quite, you never quite know with those timeouts, especially in the first half. It's always a toss-up as to whether you'll end up needing them or not. Uh, obviously, there's no way to know. You'd rather have them than not have them, but again, if you're wanting to capture some early momentum in this one, and you got to feel like that first drive was an overwhelming success if you're the Hornets. You go out there, score in two plays. One of them was a 40-plus yard touchdown run. So you feel like if you got the Chargers on the ropes, you want to go ahead, strike quickly, don't want to give that – don't want to give their defense or even the potential for that momentum they might get from preventing a two successful two-point conversion. Don't want to run any risk of that momentum transferring over to their offense or even just being retained by the defense on that last on the next drive. So I imagine that's the logic there. Just wanting to make sure they get this one in and make sure the Chargers can't take, can't have, excuse me, any positive takeaways from this defensive drive. 
And now a pretty heavy set here for the Hornets. Three men in the backfield, kind of a flex bone-ish look. They run it just straight up the middle and contact made, but he wasn't down. And the Chargers do corral after the initial hit and bring the runner down in the backfield. Timothy Orange, the tight end for the Chargers in on that tackle. I believe that may not be him. Ends with a zero. Nope, that was Timothy Orange. Yes, usually the starting tight end for the Chargers out there on the defensive line. First time I've noticed him in that position. So the Chargers, that's going to stay at a 6-0 lead. So I tell you, despite giving up the long touchdown run, I think especially the way they were able to stop that two-point conversion, a big hit, and everybody breaking through the offensive line and rallying to the ball carrier for what was technically a tackle for loss, even though it won't show on the stat sheet. I think that gives them just a little bit of a spark defensively, something they can at least try to build on on there. And the Hornets obviously going to say, hey, let's build on the touchdown run, forget the conversion, it was a fluke. Offensive line, just what in the right protection, whatever. A lot to take away from both sides here, but again, this is going to be one of the more interesting drives we've seen all season from the Chargers. How do they respond down early? They have not trailed much at all this season. They trailed in the, no, they did not trail, check that, in the game against the Ducks. There were moments where they looked like they were going to trail. I think they had four goal line stands in that game, and the Ducks did not come away with any offensive points. Yeah, their defense played outstanding. Total opposite of what we saw on that touchdown run by the Hornets. Yeah, there were moments they did not trail against the Ducks, pardon me, on that one. I know they trailed very early on in the season against the Carolina Reloaded. Again, that was week two before they'd really found their rhythm. They were down 6-0 in that one for a while, found their way back, ended up winning 28-14. But the point being that the Chargers have not been behind very much at all, even when they've deferred their option to the second half and let the opposing team's offense score go out there first. Uh, very seldom have they been behind. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they respond and whether or not they kind of stick it out with the traditional Chargers drive, run in between the tackles, rotating running backs in and out, and really just keeping things on the ground. Or do they, I don't want to say get antsy, but try and air it out a little bit, maybe get into the end zone a bit more quickly than usual. As I tell you, I'm glad we had some talking points after that last drive because all the time I've been rambling, we've had an official standing in front of the spot where the ball's to be kicked, and he has not budged, and he is still not budging. Uh-oh. And check that. Yeah, we do have scoreboard issue with the Chargers, or not with the Chargers, excuse me. Scoreboard issues are what's holding everything up. There was some miscommunication, I believe, on the two-point conversion. I think they mistakenly gave eight points to the Hornets instead of six, and now they're trying to get it sorted out. And, yeah, they accidentally turned the game clock off while they were trying to do that, and now they finally got it set. So, yeah, scoreboard issue is the culprit behind that one. Always a little – it always hits a little different when you know what's causing the hold up. All right, so here we go. This is the first we'll see of the Chargers' kickoff unit. As this one is, are they going to let it roll into the end zone? Nope, they're going to have to pick this up. It's stalled at the half-yard line. This could be a disaster for the Chargers. Oh, but they catch some blocks. No flags and trying to weave through some tackles around the 20-yard line. Didn't catch the number of that particular Charger. He took a shot. And is that a zero? Yep, that was Kamir Prydock on the return. Usually a defensive back and wide receiver. Actually started the last game at running back for the Chargers. Doesn't get a ton of carries compared to some of the other faces you'll see in the Chargers backfield, though, as Prydock uh, will not start this game at RV. He's over on the sideline. Can't blame him for wanting to get a rest after that one, and that was just a really unique sort of kick return. They thought it was going to bounce into the end zone, and I don't know that I've ever, at least in person, seen a kick stall like that at the half-yard line. I mean, it, was, it got as close as you could possibly get to going in the end zone without going in. And naturally, you don't want to give the Hornets a chance to recover that thing because all kickoffs are live. It's fair game for either side. So you have to return that thing. And then the fact that Prydock was able to get any yardage out of that, much less 20, is honestly incredible. So first down and 10 for the Chargers. Split backfield here. Mark Littlejohn hands off to Bobby Kennebrew, who has met immediately and thrown down. Does fall forward for a gain of a yard or two. It won't be much. You're going to see two running back sets pretty much the whole way for the Chargers. Two running back sets, I should say. 
Uh, interesting that they went traditional shotgun split back there, though. They don't run that one a lot. They did. They kind of used it a bit early on in the season, but usually they use what we call pistol strong. They'll have one running back lined up to the side of a quarterback, Mark Littlejohn, five yards away from the line of scrimmage, and then they'll have another one further back around eight yards away. So you kind of have a pistol and a shotgun run built into the same formation. So first down and 10 is going to become second down and nine. They're only going to give Kennebrew a yard on that carry. Ball spotted on the 22-yard line. Kennebrew and Terman are the running backs. So they motion here to a new formation. This is the full house, and they wanted to pitch that one out to wide receiver to Keys Hollings, and that one looks like it was going to get blown up. So honestly, the Chargers might have dodged a bullet with the false start on that one. They were practicing that particular formation, that particular play a lot in warm-ups, and I think the Hornets saw that and recognized, like, hey, we've seen this before. We know they're probably going to pitch this or at least try to run it to the outside. So they were all over that one. So, again, I don't. there's no guarantee that Hollings would have been brought down behind the line of scrimmage. He, he can make stuff happen in the open field. But on the surface, it seems like the Chargers – actually might have gotten helped out on that one because they do lose yardage, but they at least retain the down as we've got a timeout taken, I believe, by the Chargers. The line of scrimmage has been pushed back to the 17-yard line. They need to get to the 30. So second down and 13 is the call here. Both teams spending a timeout in the opening five minutes. Interesting, the Hornets on that two-point conversion attempt, and now the Chargers on second and long trying to get their ducks in a row. And here we go. And so the Chargers are going to stick with uh, three wide receivers, two running backs, no tight end on the field. Kenuel Johnson and Timothy Orange both active. And they're actually going to motion to the same formation here. To Keys Hollings, the third man in the backfield, they hand off to Hollings and fighting just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Or actually, no, check that. That was the original line of scrimmage. So he will pick up a couple of yards, but really good job by that Hornets defensive line breaking through some of the blocks by the offensive line and really getting to the point of attack in a hurry. Third down and 10 coming up. Needless to say, any running team in America, the Chargers included in that, really struggle in these uh, third and long situations. Quarterback Mark Littlejohn, he can sling it. But he, uh, uh, again, like almost any other quarterback in America, has the most success on those early downs or just situations where it's kind of a gray area. You could pass it or you could run it. Here, third down, where the, you know, third down and nine, third down and ten, somewhere in that neighborhood, as they motion to the full house once again here. And they will throw. Little John fakes the handoff, had a man open, but there was a gust of wind and the ball floated on, and that one's intercepted. And this might be going all the way to the house. And. Touchdown, Hornets! It's a pick six. And there was a gust of wind. Sure, I don't know that that affected the throw that much. That just looked like a doomed play from the start. The, the play action handoff did not fool anybody on that Hornets defense. <laughs> they were all over Little John. There was a guy in his face, possibly even bringing him down as we got a very late flag thrown here. Not sure who that's against. And now the Chargers down two scores early, 12-0 in favor of the Hornets here from Mount Holly. And the referee is taking a moment to sort the flags out. Again, it was out late, so it really could be on either side. Looks like we'll get an announcement. They're looking to the Chargers sideline, at least initially. Personal foul called against the Hornets on a pick six, though, wouldn't do too much damage in the grand scheme of things. Uh, since it, uh, I mean, there's really no point in forcing it on the two-point conversion here because you already stopped them from the two. I think you'd like your chances of stopping them from the two again. So, really, they would probably, if this is against the Hornets, enforce it on the kickoff and either make the Hornets kick it from further back or, say, 15 yards from wherever they get to. 
All right, so the result of the play is a touchdown. The penalty is called against the Hornets, and it looks like they will make him go for the two-point conversion. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and assess it here. So, yeah, from the it was a 10-yard penalty. Might have been holding called against him or something in that neighborhood, something in that general classification of penalties, I guess you could say. From the 12-yard line, the Hornets will go for two. It's not third down and 10 like the score bug says. We've got 11-24 left to go in the first quarter. Chargers down 12-0, and the Hornets looking to make it 14-0 with the score here. Both, team, both teams really taking their time getting set here. Here's the attempt from the 12. Three receivers, a tight end, and a running back in the formation for the Hornets as they motion to a receiver stack. And they're going to go straight drop back. Cam Delano provides pressure initially. Quarterback, oh, almost got loose, and a shoestring tackle made there by... Can't quite make out the number. I think that's Larry Albert, but I'm not 100% sure. But either way, the two-point conversion comes up for not. Keep it at 12-0 in favor of the Chargers. Still a lot of football left to be played, obviously. We're not even five minutes into the first quarter, but you can feel the momentum already building on the Hornets' side after that pick six. The Chargers really need to get something going on this drive. And uh, I was about to say it starts with the first down. Really, it starts with... Just being able to get pop off a good run, it doesn't necessarily have to be a first down, it'd help, but even something like seven, eight yards would, I think, be enough of a spark for them to be able to settle down a little bit and not feel like they have to go get this all back in one play. Because again, even for the first quarter, there's a lot of ball left to be played. The Hornets have run two offensive plays. We've got 11.24 left to go here in the first. Plenty of time for plenty of things to happen. As our cameraman had to step out, I'm going to be on camera duty for a moment. Here we go. The Chargers using three deep return men. Fonsby Clyburn, I can see for sure. I see Kamir Prydock all the way on the over, other side of the field. Not quite sure who the man in the middle is, though. Can't make out his jersey number from here. I think it's a 13, but I'm not sure. And we got the ready for play. We're just waiting on the Hornets kicker now. And there is the kick. And here we go, fielded inside the 10. The Chargers should have some pretty good field position. Oh, but man, they ran into a brick wall on the 30. They weren't getting past those blockers, or those tacklers, I should say, as we got a Hornet sent into the Chargers sideline in that initial contact around the 30. There was some jawing to be had, as, as you would expect in a game of this magnitude. Again, I, I cannot stress the amount of trash talk I've seen from both sides online leading up to this one. Both teams were really, really excited for this game, as they should be. The number one versus number two seed in the playoffs. I mean, both these teams entered the game with identical 10 and one records. Ball's gonna be spotted on the, well, they don't, actually haven't spotted the ball yet. They were switching it out. And oh, uh, the ref had a drop. Can't have that. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna place this one down on the 36, or no, check that, 31. And I'll have to leave the down distance marker off for the time being until our cameraman gets back. Here's first and 10. This is more what we're used to seeing from the Chargers. One receiver, two tight ends, two running backs, and Little John mishandled the snap initially, hands it off to Jesse Terman, who goes nowhere. Did the ball come loose? The Hornets think they have it. It looks like they're gonna rule Terman down. As it stands for now, it's a gain of just a yard or two. No substitutions on either side, so it does look like the Chargers are going to retain possession. And, yep, they were just backing up to get in the huddle. So, yet again, that Hornets defensive line breaking through some initial blocks and finding the ball carrier in a hurry. That offensive line for the Chargers has really been one of their strengths. Well, the trenches on both sides have. We haven't gotten a good look at their defensive line quite yet. 
just on those, again, counting the two-point conversions even. The Hornets have only run four offensive plays, so it's a little early to make a judgment on where the Chargers' defense is at, but right now their offense has some work to do because this Hornets' defense is really attacking the ball carrier. They got a lot of men in the box really trying to overload the line of scrimmage, but this one is going to go against the Hornets. Little John gets them with a hard count, and that'll help pick up a couple of yards. Second and nine becomes second and four. Or actually, it looks like right now the Chargers are backing this one up. It looked from here like the Hornets jumped first, and oh, yep, there they go. So they are going to march this one forward. They just had to talk about it for a moment. So again, second down and four coming up. Ball spotted on the 37. The line to gain is the 41. And the Chargers uh, taking their time in the huddle here. Got to mind the play clock. They haven't had too many issues with delay of games this year outside of, you know, the first game or two of the season, which every team can attest to, you know, have problems getting plays in that early in the season. Uh, for the most part, though, hasn't been an issue for the Chargers. I would imagine because so many of their plays are so similar, there's not a lot of uh, variables you'd have to program in any given play call. It's just, hey, who are we handing the ball off to? This time it's Jesse Terman, and Terman kind of makes a little running lane for himself there and picks up about four yards. It's going to be close. Looks like third and inches is the initial call. Going to be interesting to see if the Chargers change up their offensive philosophy on this one for third and yeah, third and very, very short, and I don't mean they'll throw it here. They might. <laughs> I've been wrong before. But it's going to be interesting to see if they try a traditional handoff or maybe sneak this from under center. Little John is comfortable taking snaps from under center. It's just not necessarily his specialty. And they will go with a much tighter formation here. Two tight ends, only one wide receiver in the game. He split way, way out, all the way on the sideline. And you got to imagine that if the Chargers don't pick this up and don't lose a ton of yards, this would be four down territory. On third and inches, they hand off to Kennebrew, who's met in the backfield immediately. Great penetration by that Hornets defense. It's going to set up, or no, check that. That was not third and inches. Right before the snap, it looks like they moved it up to first down and 10. So that would have been, I think the Chargers still would have gone for that one. It's, uh, you know, right around midfield. You're kind of in no man's land. Down 12, may as well give it a whirl. But this one, the decision obviously <laughs> a little different now as we gear up for instead of a potential fourth down play, this is going to be second down and 12, 13, second and 13. Again, this defensive line for the Hornets, the story so far, you can see them really overloading the weak side of the formation. And they're going to try a quarterback sweep with Little John. Had a, one of his own blockers kind of run into him, and that caused him to fall over. Turf monster, friendly fire, whatever you want to call it. That one uh, just not going the way of the Chargers. Flag down on the play, though. Almost feels like it happened too fast or something like a holding call. Almost got a wonder if it was pre-snap. And offside, it's called against the defense. So we talked about how they were really overloading the weak side of the formation. They've had three, sometimes even four guys over there on pretty much every snap. That time a little too close to the backfield. And defensive penalties carry an automatic first down. So the flags really biting the Hornets on this drive. 7.32 to go in the first half. Check that no first down. It's going to be second down and eight. Two tight ends set. They hand this one off to Cam Delano, and Delano has some running room initially, but the safeties and linebackers are able to close it up quickly. Still a nice gain. One the Chargers probably need, I don't want to say needed, needed, but that definitely helps. Gain of about four on the play. Sets up third down and four. Actually, this might be closer to third and five. They need to cross midfield to keep this drive going. They break the huddle pretty quickly. Larry Albert going to be the fullback on this one. Cam Delano, the running back. Here we go. Still sticking with that two tight end set. And Little John got somebody with the hard count. Both sides pointing at each other, but I think the Chargers are the ones that jumped. And, yep, false start. Ooh, that one stings. Called against the Chargers. Third down and ten coming up now. 
not third. So now third and ten. Going to be interesting to see if this changes up the play call given what happened the last time they were in this down and distance. You know, obviously the pressure on Little John early, the wind maybe factoring into it too. We had a really big gust of wind come through right as the ball was being released on that pick six. And they're going to keep it on the ground this time. Delano met in the backfield. Going to be a loss. And you got to imagine the Chargers are going to punt this one. If it was fourth and five or less, it'd be a different story. But I imagine they're going to boot this one away and try and lean on that defense that, again, has, despite the score, only been on the field for two official plays. There were two two-point conversions. And other than that, the Hornets scored on their second play of the game. And we haven't seen their offense since. The other touchdown coming courtesy of a pick six. So Jesse Turman, usually a running back and defensive lineman for the Chargers, going to come out to send this one away. He's had some really good punts on the year. Had a, just a phenomenal game in general, all three phases against the Ducks last week in their first round, in their second round playoff game, excuse me. Had a couple of sacks, two touchdowns, some nice punts. He really did it all. And they're going to need him to do it all tonight if they want to come back in this one. 5-19 and counting left to go here in the first quarter. The Chargers having a little bit of trouble getting the right personnel on the field, but it seems like they've got it sorted out now. High snap for Terman. Whoa, mishandles it. And can he get this one away? Yes, he does. It ain't the prettiest punt, but it should take a Chargers roll. And indeed it does. So disaster averted on that one. At least for the time being, the Chargers somehow managed to get that one off. A rugby-style kick from Jesse Terman, and they're going to kind of quite literally flip the field on that one. They started that drive on their own 31. The Hornets are going to start this drive on their own 36. Again, not the prettiest punt or the longest punt in the grand scheme of things, but just being able to get the ball away after nearly fumbling the snap is a victory in itself. And now you see Jesse Terman headed back out there. He's one of their defensive linemen again. Had a phenomenal game last week. Uh, the pressure they were able to get on both quarterbacks that the Ducks used. The Ducks ended up using two in that game due to injury and just performance-related issues. But whoever the like, it didn't matter who the quarterback was. They were able to get penetration with just four or five-man rushes on almost every snap, and they're really going to need to replicate that success here. Four receivers in the set. The Hornets send a man in motion. Got flags. Before the snap, false start called against the Hornets. It's going to be first down and 15. Had a lot of flags in this one. The Chargers, at least from what in the games we've seen, we haven't done all of their games, just the ones at home. They're usually a pretty clean team. I can't attest to the Hornets. I haven't seen them play in person at all. But the, even then, I mean, this has been a, a lot of penalties early on in this game. And we're only two-thirds away through the first quarter, 5.01 on the clock. It's going to start on the ready for play. Only a five-man box this time for the Chargers. Cam Delano, one of the linebackers, split out as a nickel corner. And they're going to try a pitch to the weak side of the field. Good block laid out by the tight end. And then I think that was that Bobby Kinnebrew. Yes, it was coming down to shove the runner for the Hornets out of bounds after a very short gain. I think it's only going to be a gain of maybe one or two yards. Second down and long coming up here for the Hornets. We'll call it tentatively second down and 13. I believe that's where we're at. And now the Hornets taking their time in the huddle. Didn't appear that they switched out any personnel and at least for the time being they haven't. Four wide receivers out in the set, but I believe number 17 is their tight end, and they might move him in towards the line of scrimmage. And here's the snap, straight drop back for the Hornets quarterback. Pressure applied, but not fast enough. Completion out to the far sideline. And this is going to set up third down and short. Pickup of around eight-ish yards there. Third down and maybe three, about five, I think, is going to be the call. Gain of eight on that pass. Starting to get a little wind in here. Could factor into the passing game just a hair. You never quite know. We'll be below, about probably below 345 in the first quarter when this ball gets snapped. 
Ball spot on the 41. The Hornets need to get to the 45, 46 around there. On what is really closer to four, third and four and a half. They're going to motion a man across the formation. Trips to the bottom of the screen here. And another straight drop back looking to the far side. Incomplete. Just short hopped that pass a little bit. We got a flag out. I think they're going to call 14 of the Chargers for a late hit, which uh, is kind of a ticky-tack call. Again, the refs had a better view of it than we did, but it, I think he was sliding in there to try and make a tackle and just get that receiver down. Had he managed to come up with the catch, and they say he got there a little too late. That's the, that's the only thing I can think that they threw the flag for, and they wave it off. Yeah, I was about. Yeah, I was gonna be. That was. That would have been a real. Yeah, like I mean, by the rule book, sure, but that's within a fraction of a second. That'd be like real ticky tack sort of thing. So, and uh, it looks like they're. I think the Hornets thought about going for it there for a second. Again, they, you got to feel like they've got a lot of momentum, specifically with what they've been able to do on the defensive side of the ball so far, shutting down far and above the best offense in the league. The Chargers, again, averaging more than 34 points a game. They've scored, about, I think it was 377 points through 11 games on the year. So the Hornets have to be feeling good in that regard. And although I do think they were thinking about maybe going for that one, given that, you know, they had that second down pass that went for about eight yards. But I think this is the right call on their end. Their defense is playing really well. They've stopped the Chargers a couple of times now. I think they're going to give it back to them and just play field position a little bit. The Chargers have two return men back on this one. And that one almost blocked. The Hornets do manage to get the kickoff, and it takes a very nice Hornets bounce before being fielded and then coming loose. This is anybody's ball. Man, a couple of different guys had a shot at it. The Hornets aren't pointing like they recovered it, and indeed, the refs say that the Chargers got back on top of that one. I'll tell you, a gutsy decision there by the return man to try to field that one. I think he was maybe trying to play a little 4D chess, maybe catch some of those gunners off guard, thinking, oh, there's no way he's gonna return this thing and then pick it up the last second and take off, but just never quite had a good handle on the ball, but everything happened so fast that none of those Hornets gunners had a chance to get a hand on it either. The Chargers, though, definitely lucky to be able to get back on top of that one. That would have been a back-breaking turnover if they had not been able to recover that fumble. Regardless of the potential turnover though, the Hornets do pin the Chargers pretty deep in their own territory. Ball's gonna be spotted right around the 20 yard line. Yeah, pretty much the same as the touchback, right between the hashes too. 2.22 left to go here in the first quarter. Hornets on top, 12 nothing, though the initial scoring fest that started this game off has come to a halt. Both teams have netted a stop on defense. They traded punts, and now the Chargers are going to take back over on offense. Their only first down of the game coming by penalty so far. Or no, check that. That wasn't a – they got penalties to lead up to the first down, but they did pick up the first on the ground. Split back formation, and again, that defensive line is just timing up the snap count so well, but breaking tackles very well is the running back for the Chargers. I – I'm not sure who that was. I didn't get the number. They handed that one off so quick. They're going to bring Larry Albert into the game now. And there's some discussion in the pile. Looked like the Hornets might have thought it came loose, but the Chargers retained possession of the ball. As I think, oh, that was Terman on the carry. And despite, it, I thought he got a little further on that one, but they're going to say it's only a gain of two. I think some of these runs look maybe just a tad longer than they are because the Hornets' defensive line is getting such a good push off the snap. These offensive linemen are a yard or two deep into the backfield by the time the handoff is complete and the running back is trying to find a lane to go through. And the Chargers are going to use three receivers here. Split back formation. They've got all the receivers split out very wide trying to thin out that box as they hand off this time to Prydock, and Prydock is going nowhere. And man, the Hornets are fired up. It's gonna be third down and long. Looked to me like Prydock might have lost a yard, but I think they're gonna say he got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and eight. A pivotal play and what is quickly turned into a defensive standoff or at least kind of feels that way now that the Chargers have notched a stop on defense too. 
As we got whistles here, I think we got a timeout called by the Chargers with 47 seconds left to go in the first. They couldn't have let the play clock run down on that one. They would have had to have snapped it. So they're going to take a moment to talk things over, try and figure out how they can pick up this first down. Uh, playbook is very closed off, especially given that they haven't completed a pass so far in this game. They've only attempted one, and it did not go their way. Got returned for a pick six. So, I mean, you know, third down and eight, you're down 12. You think you got to throw it, and maybe you kind of have to, but how do you what, – what sort of plays are you drawing up for a quarterback that has not had a chance to get into a rhythm yet? All right, and we are back. Sorry about that. Had to duck out for just a moment. We're ready for third down and eight. Should be a very interesting play call. Again, kind of an obvious passing situation, especially given that the ground game has not shown the potential to be able to pick up eight yards in one go. But Mark Littlejohn has only attempted one pass. They've only even tried to throw it once. That one was incomplete, went for a pick six. So it's not like he's really had a chance to get into a rhythm here going to be a very interesting play as they fake the handoff try a screen out to Jesse Terman that one read well would have been a good play on first down but that is not going to be enough to pick up the first down here Terman might have gotten that one out to the 31 so our cameraman Daniel Ruff was uh, talking about maybe the potential of a screen pass real similar to that during the break while the Chargers were talking about well Chargers were talking everything over during that timeout only problem is I think the Hornets were we're operating off that same line of logic too. So Little John does get a completion in for what's that for what for what that's worth. Oh, I'm tripping all over my words today. Fourth down and four coming up. The Chargers gonna have to punt this one again. They avoided disaster the last time they sent their punt team out. A high snap almost was fumbled by punter Jesse Terman. He managed to reel it back in and somehow get a kick off that ultimately ended up being a pretty decent punt. We'll see if, if he can do it again, but he's got his helmet off, and oh, they were just waiting for the end of the quarter on that one. So yeah, the clock ran after Terman was tackled. And now they're gonna switch sides of the field. Terman is talking to, I think he's talking to his fellow players. He's fired up about something. I'm not sure what, I couldn't quite hear what he was saying from here. And they're gonna Head all the way to the other side of the field. It's a long walk for the Chargers, especially given that they were already on only around their 23. So they got to go not just flip the field. They got to go all the way to the other side. All right, so the ball is spotted right around the 25. On, not quite on the far side hash, it's close to it. Not all the way there. The Hornets have one return man stationed around the 35. He's coming closer to the 40 now. And here we go. Fourth and four, good rush applied. Oh, and Terman kind of hit that one with his shin. I think the pressure might have gotten in his head just a little bit, and the Hornets are going to have fantastic field position. Funny how on that one the overall operation looked a lot cleaner, and it doesn't go near as far, and then you have the last punt where Terman was under all kinds of pressure and managed to send it about 40 yards downfield after the roll. So Terman and a handful of the other players on the punt team are actually going to head right back out. We've got a lot of Ironmen on both sides. Terman one of many on that front. We have not gotten to see a lot of the Chargers, well, 
not a lot of the Chargers defense in general. It, Hornets scored in two plays on their first drive and then went three and out last time. So they've only had five offensive snaps. But I was about to say the Chargers defensive line in particular has not shown the sorts of flashes it did in their game against the Ducks a week or so ago. Now, obvious, it's clear now that the Hornets have a, a much better offensive line than the Ducks did, and I'm sure that contributed some. But they just have not been able to get the sort of pressure, even on just you know standard dropbacks that they were – against a lot of other teams this season, not just the Ducks. So it's going to be interesting to see if they maybe dial up some different, you know, different pressure packages, something of that nature, just to try and get things going a little more here. Ball is loose, and I think the Hornets got it back. But the Chargers finally find something to build some momentum on as I think the Chargers think they might have it. It's going to be close, but the Chargers are starting to make substitutions, and the Hornets weren't. And hang on, I think, do the Chargers have the ball? Yes, they do, it's a turnover. So, wow, talk about that for a momentum builder. And talk about a stop too. I mean, you have a disaster of a punt, maybe nets eight yards, something like that. The Hornets start the drive inside their own 35 and the Chargers get the ball right back for their offense. So that is something you can build some momentum on but again that offense this offense has got to go out there and get something going either on the ground or through the air i mean little john is a quarterback we've talked about it before on the arena circuit he really can sling it once he gets in a rhythm but he is specifically one of the areas where he struggled and i've known him for long enough to be able to say this but uh yeah especially when you kind of have to make passes without context when you go out there on a third and eight and you haven't thrown it in 10 plays or seven plays or something like that and you say hey go get us a completion that is one of the areas where any quarterback really little john is, is just one of many quarterbacks that has had issues in those sort of situations he's very much a rhythm passer and little john actually not on the field here we saw a little bit of this in their last game against the ducks to keys hollings is going to be a wildcat quarterback and he didn't have a chance to be much of anything on that play the ducks or excuse me the the hornets get my teams mixed up Man, they have been timing the snap count up well all night. They got it perfect on that one. Hollings didn't have a prayer. Lamar Jackson wouldn't have been able to get out of that one. It's going to technically, I think, go down as a sack, but just nothing happening on that play. No hope at all. As Little John stays on the sideline, I think they're going to try and get this ground game going a little bit with the Wildcat. Yeah, again, Little John, well, there was a point last week when they were doing this and we thought Little John might have gotten hurt, and I, I did think he ended up getting his wrist taped or something, but it wasn't he, – like, he's got his helmet on. I don't think injuries are the concern here. I think they're just trying to do anything they can to get their bread and butter operating like usual. And, oh, they're going to throw this thing. Hollings evades the rush, directing traffic, and, oh, just yeets this thing downfield where it is almost intercepted. Pass kind of broken up there by one of the receivers, number 17, and I'm sure the coaches are telling him, don't ever throw that ball again. <laughs> Just skirt out of bounds. He was right around the line of scrimmage. It wouldn't have been a spectacular play by any means, but it would have prevented a possible heart attack on the sidelines for the Chargers coaching staff. Oh man, go rolling in the opposite direction, just throws it across his body to anybody in particular, anybody that might be looking for it. Ooh, Chargers. They dodged a bullet on that one. That is a pass that for any budding quarterbacks watching, any kids that might be playing quarterback on their youth team, that is a pass you should never, ever attempt to throw. Don't do what Dakeese Hollings just did, as Hollings going to stay in here on third down and 18. I think they might like his play extending ability just a little bit more. We saw him. He's got the wheels to be able to roll out of the pocket if need be. And Hollings actually stays in the pocket here and now on the move, has a rusher in his face and he's just gonna try and pick up some yards on the ground and we got a flag. I think they're gonna say that one was out of bounds. It was close. I'll definitely give him that. It wasn't like that happened like five yards past the white paint or something. I think the Chargers are gonna catch a little bit of a break here. The Hornets had that one defended really well. And they're just going to talk about this a little more. Again, I, I think that was close enough that they could wave this one off if they want. It was, a, it was far from the most egregious late hit I've ever seen. 
The chain gang has not budged. They've still got it at third and 18. This isn't like a repeat the down sort of penalty. Mark Littlejohn trying to eavesdrop on the conversation. And personal foul for targeting called against the Hornets. Number 11, one of their defensive ends, gets called on that one. And that, by my count, should carry an automatic first down. And we got the far side official getting that message to the chain gang. And indeed, they will move this one up. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So the Chargers catching a break on that one. And this one's going to be spotted right around midfield. Doesn't look like there was any disqualification tied to that penalty. I don't see 11 out there now, but I, I didn't see him leave or anything as they hand this one off and finally find some running room. Fonsby Clyburn, we haven't called his name today. One of the most explosive players on this offense, really this team in general, as man, the Chargers finally showing some signs of life. Fonsby Clyburn getting it done on the ground as we got a timeout called by the Hornets, who I think after that run, I tell you, it wasn't, they seemed a little shell-shocked. Like I think just between the fact that the Chargers finally managed to get something going and specifically how quickly Clyburn got to the edge and then downfield, they were kind of looking at each other like, what just happened? Not even the sense that there was this defensive miscommunication, but like, man, we, we blinked and he's 20 yards downfield, man. Man, interesting play there. And good to see that the Chargers finally have a spark on offense. As we got some more jawing over there, you can kind of see it right in the center of your screen. Both sides need, there aren't any officials around, but both sides need to make sure they keep it under control. We've already had enough flags in this game. Gain of uh, about 20 yards flat on that one. First down and 10 from the 30 now for the Chargers. 11.53 to go here in the second quarter. Man, that Chargers sideline starting to get fired up, but uh, I think the majority of the noise is coming from their, uh, their uh, camera folk down there, actually. I think the media folks are getting some sound going down there all right and here we go split back formation kenuel johnson checks in as the chargers tight end mark little john back in at quarterback whoa low snap this one's anyone's ball i think the hornets have it they signal for it initially and that one just it came in low and then kind of bounced off a of little john's leg and once that it so we're playing rugby after that and the hornets after getting a few bad breaks of their own come up with a turnover another fumbled snap two of those in as many drives and we got a very late flag coming out all the way from the far side of the field there wasn't anybody even near that official I don't my only guess is that like he heard a player say something that they shouldn't have said and like personal foul against the Hornets is the only thing I can possibly think of given where that flag was thrown they're talking it over but again even that the personal foul is just a shot in the dark. There wasn't anybody near that official. And now we got one of the Hornets coaches out there. He's fired up about something. Emotions running hot on both sides of the field. Man, I tell you, just when the Chargers thought they had something going, just those not even unscripted plays, just those forces of nature almost, the things you absolutely cannot control, or I mean, a you know, a bad snap, I suppose you have some control over it, but the things you can't predict, or seems like those have really been the ones that have bit both teams so far. And the penalty does go against the Hornets, but they'll retain possession. It was a post-snap penalty as they head up into the huddle. All right, and the Hornets back out on offense. Uh, it feels so strange. We just haven't seen much of them on offense in this game. They had the one touchdown run by their quarterback, about a 40-yarder on their opening drive, and since then it's been radio silence as they go. The quarterback keeper here, and that one is going nowhere. Ball comes loose, but he was down. Cam Delano going to play it safe and run him back anyway, but we don't have replay review. Even then, I think the quarterback was down. Sack by, I think that was Bobby Kinnebrew. It was, uh, I got busy watching the officials and I didn't get the number, 
but a much needed negative play by that Chargers defense and specifically that defensive line finally coming in and showing that they can be a factor as well. It's a big loss for the Hornets too. About, I think this is gonna set up around second and 18. Yep, second and 18 is the call. The line to gain is the 43. The Hornets are set up on the 25. I don't think they'll even try to get it. And you can kind of see now the Chargers have shifted to that three down lineman set they used a lot against the Ducks early on. They're trying to get a hat right over the head of the center and force another bad snap. And oh, they mistimed that one. And yeah, the refs were slow on the whistle there. The Chargers jumped initially. Though technically speaking, it was a the Chargers crossed the line of scrimmage, but the ball hadn't necessarily been snapped, so I guess they're going to talk about it and say if uh, I didn't see who the rusher was that jumped, but if he got back into the neutral zone before they snapped that one, then I think he's good, and it'd go against the Hornets. And that's probably what they're discussing here. But, yeah, that one was odd. The Chargers looked like they crossed, and so one of the receivers for the Hornets took off, and then they snapped the ball. And then after all of that, then the refs got the whistle blown. I don't know if they just like had it by their side, didn't have it at the ready or something. That was an odd looking play to say the least. And they do call that one against the Chargers. Uh, again, I think that was the right call. I don't know that that uh, potential pass rush, he was just trying to time up the snap count and got into the neutral zone and just couldn't quite get out. Second down and 13, still a long ways to go for the Hornets. And there's the ready for play, ball spotted now on the 30. 10.48 left to go here in the second corner, counting, I should say, 10.48 and counting. As uh, it's off your screen right now, but some of the Chargers offensive linemen are practicing the snaps, trying to make sure they got that sorted out for their next drive. And the Chargers, yeah, they jumped again. So the snap count specifically playing a big role for both sides here. The Hornets starting to use it to their advantage, changing the cadence up to get the Chargers to jump. Two consecutive offsides penalties called against the Chargers. Second and 18 becomes second and eight. So we saw that obviously one of the primary issues for the Chargers offense so far has been how well the Hornets have timed up the snap count. Now the Chargers trying to do the same thing in turn. Three-man rush and a high pass goes incomplete and sets up third down and eight. Not a lot of pressure on the quarterback there. I, th I think he just got happy feet. Saw an open man and couldn't quite deliver it. Again, we've uh, we got a little bit of a breeze up here. It's uh, like a, just a little gustier than what you'd call a, a gentle autumn breeze. So I don't I don't know if that's actually playing a factor into things. Again, with, with quarterbacks, you never know. They'd always any slight change in the wind might kind of get something going in their heads. But I don't know, especially the, the wind for reference is to the back of the quarterback. So right now, if the Chargers were to take over, Mark Littlejohn would be throwing into it. The Hornets are throwing against it. The Hornets are throwing into the wind, throwing with it. And the Chargers try and change up the look of the snap. Four-man rush, pressure initially, but they got a hole in the coverage and pass complete on third and eight. The Chargers are trying to say he was out of bounds, but yeah, number 12, Jared Watkins is celebrating like he shoved him out. He didn't see the call. That was a completed pass. And the Chargers play a lot of zone coverage, and the Hornets just did their homework on that one. They play a lot of cover two specifically, uh, cover three looks too, but a lot of plays that leave that far sideline open if the safeties can't get over there and guard it. Jared Watkins trying to argue his case. It, I mean, it was definitely a close call, but it looked from here that the receiver got in, and I don't think they'd have any way of changing it given that the Hornets are already down there now. Watkins can't believe it though. Justly upset, he thought he'd forced him out. Instead, it's first down and 10 for the Hornets. Ball past midfield. They've got it on the 45. Four receivers set. They run this one up the middle. Got a great hole to run through. Man, those offensive linemen got way downfield. Great job initially. And that one's gonna pick up another first down. Inside the 30 now, ball's gonna be spotted on, they get spotted on the 30? Yeah, it looks like it, right between the hashes on the 30 yard line. Nine minutes and counting. This Chargers defense has had some of its greatest moments 
made some of its best plays and they've had their back up against the wall like this, but this Hornets offense really starting to drive and they got the Chargers again. Yeah, but this guy's awesome. Way too antsy with the snap, or that defensive line, at least for the Chargers, is getting really excited trying to get some pressure in the backfield. They, they have not good. been able to do it, but they they're also, the Hornets also do have a receiver number 13 that if he, he's either timing the snap count up perfectly or he might be getting away with a little half step before the line, it's, a, it's close, it's very close. But for now, that one's gonna go against the Chargers and set up first down and five. The rare first down and five. Ball on the 25, knocking on the door of the red zone. Same formation, two receivers on either side of the set. Single high safety for the Chargers here as they bring some of their defensive backs down. And the Hornets run this one, almost looks like a draw. And they get just enough for yet another first down. Inside the 20 now. Gain of about seven on that one. First down and 10 coming up. I tell you that one, like I said, that one almost looked like a draw. I don't think it was, but those Chargers defensive linemen just got so deep into the backfield so fast that they'd rush themselves out of the play by the time the ball was handed off. So in a way, you'd imagine that that might loosen them up a little bit, make them at least kind of go into more of a run defense mode, which in theory would open up the passing game a bit. Pressure in the passing game hasn't really been that big of an issue for the Hornets just because they've gotten the ball out of the quarterback's hands so fast. But down here especially where you can afford to, you know, because you got the end zone as an extra defender, so to speak, you can afford to maybe send an extra guy on a rush. Pressure going to play a role here. Four-man rush by the Chargers, and time runs out. Sack! Taken down by number two, I believe, of the Chargers. I'm not 100% sure if that's Jordan Adams wearing a different jersey number or if that is uh, number two. Uh, I haven't seen Jordan Adams, one of their usual def defenders, uh, one of their linebackers. I haven't seen him out here yet. So for now, we'll go with my roster. Jamar Brown, number two, listed as number two. 5'10", 243 linebacker. He fits the bill, so I do believe that was Brown with the sack on that one. So the pressure, even with the four-man rush, I, I think they were trying to take a shot to the end zone, which is why that play took a little longer to develop than usual. And really good job of playing contained by the Chargers on that one, too. They didn't over-pursue on the edge and allow an avenue of escape on that particular play. So when the quarterback did have pressure in his face, there was nowhere to go as, wow, they got the Chargers again. Though, actually, they kind of, the rest kind of let that one go before they blew the whistle, and they might have gotten the Hornets, actually. Because right when they blew the whistle, the Chargers, it looked like they were at least in the process of getting back into the neutral zone, and one of the guards for the Hornets was moving. I tell you, I've never seen snap count play, play this much of a role in a game so far. This is really interesting. This is a whole game so far. Yeah. As, uh, yeah, the ump's taking a while to talk this one out. 6-12 left to go in the first half. The Hornets kind of knocking on the door, kind of flip-flopping between close and not close to it. You had the sack, but now the penalty against the Chargers is going to move them forward. It's, uh, I tell you, it's interesting that they've gotten the Chargers this many times, too. I mean, usually after one, maybe two hard counts like that, they get... Uh, you know, they kind of stiffen up to it and say, like, hey, don't listen for the clap or anything like that. Just watch the center's arm and go off of that. It's, it's interesting they've gotten them this many times. When that's happened in previous games, the Chargers have privied up to it a little faster as the Hornets going to take a shot for the end zone here, testing out that pass defense, and they've got a touchdown. Man, just a 50-50 ball, and the Hornets come out with it. 18 to nothing is your new score. And the Hornets finally recapture some of the momentum they built in the opening frames of this game. It's a three-score lead. Or actually, uh, technically, wait, hang on, no, it's, yeah, math is not my strong suit. Yeah, it's a three-score lead. Yeah, I was trying to do my math with the conversions and all, but the most the Chargers could get in two is 16 points. So yeah, three touchdowns on the day. First passing touchdown so far for the Hornets. They had the pick six and the rushing TD. And now they're going to line it up for a two-point conversion to try and make this a 20-point lead. Easily the biggest deficit the Chargers have faced this year. And it looks like the Hornets are having some trouble getting enough people on the field. They finally grab one of their other offensive linemen and bring him out. Yeah, they did not have 
I don't even know if they didn't have the right personnel. They just didn't have enough. They were about to run that one with 10 plays before they realized they were missing a man. And here we go. Quarterback's going to roll, trying to go back to his tight end. I think he got it. And waiting on the signal. The line judge says yes, and I guess everybody else just agrees with him because none of the other officials signaled, even the one that was right there. But as it stands, the two-point conversion is successful. The Hornets cash in their first conversion of the game. They failed on their first two, but they get the full eight on that one. 20 to nothing, the current score, and the Chargers really looking for answers here. Again, it looked like they might have had something going on that last drive before the fumbled snap brought an end to all the momentum they built on the back of a Fonsby Clyburn run for about 20 yards. They really need some answers here. Again, I do not believe they've trailed this much in a game this season, but the playoffs are where you have to find out how good you are in all aspects of a football game, whether you're leading by 20 or down by 20. I think we're going to learn a lot about these teams over the next uh, two and a half quarters or so. 5.42 left to go here in the second. So on paper, enough, well more than enough time for the Chargers to put together a drive. I don't think if they, specifically if they do manage to get the chains moving and pick up a couple of first downs, uh, I don't think the clock would become much of a factor until they were deep enough into the red zone that they'd be looking for touchdowns anyway. But I'm thinking too far ahead. The Chargers cannot afford to go with that mindset and be thinking about, oh, do we have enough time to score? They've just, they got to pick up a first down or two. I mean, it has been tough sledding on their end. The Hornets' defensive line has really taken over this game, even though it has been a while since we've seen them. They possess the ball, the Hornets' offense on that last drive, possessed the ball very well, took a lot of time off the clock. It was about a five-minute drive. So this will be our first look at the Chargers in a good bit. It's going to be interesting to see if they go with some of the same hard count strats that we saw the Hornets use on that last drive because, I mean, Obviously, the Chargers had problems with it, so naturally you'd assume that, oh, one team's having trouble, the other team would have trouble too. But moreover, with how well the Hornets have been timing up the snap count and how how they've just gotten right on the quarterback as soon as the ball is snapped, it's interesting that the Chargers haven't leaned into that more than they did. I know they had the one go for a false start instead of a offsides penalty against the defense, but especially down 20 to nothing, you got to find a spark wherever you can. As this one goes through the legs of the return man, and he's going to find some space now, waiting for his blockers to set up some room for him, and tackle made around the 23-yard line. Very patient run, but just kind of ran out of real estate on that one. As, at the very least, a silver lining on both sides that a lot of the jawing and the back and forth is, uh, seems to have kind of cooled off a little bit here. Never, it's always, you know, it's fun when you have a little bit of it, but it was a, it was definitely getting to the point where it had outstayed its welcome. Things seem to have kind of leveled over on both sidelines. So, how much of a role will the snap count play on this drive? The Chargers deep in their own territory. Larry Albert going to be one of the running backs on this play. I didn't see the other one. As Mark Littlejohn heading out to the huddle. They're going to bring in Kamir Pridock, uh, possibly as a receiver, and they may use him as a running back. They have before. Takis Hollings, I also see Timothy Orange, their tight end's going to be out there. 5.33 left to go in the first half. Pridock and Hollings are going to split out as receivers. Larry Albert and Fonsby Clyburn, the running backs, Timothy Orange, the lone tight end here. This is their base set, that pistol strong, one tight end, two receivers look as... They're going to move this one up. Looks like there might have been a penalty against the Hornets that we didn't see because this is definitely in the penalty in the area of a five-yarder, something of that sort. The Chargers, I'm sure, will take it. First down and 10 from the 29. Here we go. And good penetration by that defensive line. Fonsby Clyburn being patient, takes a shot, but does pick up a couple of yards. I tell you, some of the best runs for the Chargers this year have been off tackle, not necessarily full-on stretch or pitch runs to the outside, but just kind of going off the outside hip of the tackle, staying close to the offensive line, but still kind of going around it just a little bit. Not quite a full-on outside run, more of a zone blocking scheme that they use, but that is really where they've had some of their best runs, especially when Clyburn's in the game. He can run it to the out, like way, way to the outside too, if they need him to. 
Gain of eight on that one, second down and two, and they fumbled another snap. I think Clyburn got this one. Little John tried to kind of quick pitch it to him, but they were standing close enough that he could have just handed it off. I'm not sure if that was by design or if Little John maybe was feeling the heat and tried to get rid of it. That was a weird looking play, and it's really gonna push the Chargers back. Loss of six or, yeah, loss of five or six on that one. Looks like they're spotting this as third down and seven. So once again, we're, they're in that quandary. Do you run the risk of letting this defensive line hit home and maybe get a sack in if you try a pass? Or given that Clyburn's ripped off some nice runs, do you just try and keep this on the ground? I, I tell you, I would not be, I would not want to be in the offensive play caller's shoes for the Chargers. He's got a tough decision to make. As the Hornets almost jumped off and they fumbled another snap. Once again, I think they got back on top of it, but this is just uncharacteristic of the Chargers. This is, yeah, three fumbled snaps. We saw that bite them early on in the, like early, early on in the season when they played the Bengals and the reloaded in like week one and two. It's, they just seem nervous. And so they do recover the fumble, but it's gonna bring up fourth and 12. And once more, the Chargers are gonna have to punt. The clock is running. The Hornets haven't taken a timeout, but even without it, they will have well more than enough time to be able to try and put another drive together. They're probably gonna get this one back with about three minutes to go. We're at 320 and counting here in the first half. And the Hornets just continue to show why they are the number one defense in the CCFL. Again, only allowed 66 points in 11 games, an average of six points even per game, which is crazy to think about. And even crazier is the fact that they are below that margin now. Zero points surrendered to the best offense statistically in the league. As the Chargers, yeah, they had some serious personnel issues. The punts have gotten them all year. I mean, that hasn't just been, you know, a week one shaking the rust off sort of issue. That every single time they have punted this year, it seems like they've had nine or ten guys out there and had to round somebody up at the last minute. It's, uh, it's so strange to see. And... I mean, it's been like that for every team, really, with the points. As Terman finally gets a good one off, but it hangs in the air for quite a while and then takes the Chargers' bounce, and it's going to be returnable from the 40. And the Hornets, their return man got a nice head of steam, but his momentum has stopped at the 50, and they'll take over from there. So the Chargers flip the field as best they can, given how far backed up they were. First down and 10 from right at midfield. Going to be interesting to see if the Chargers patched up the pass, or not the pass rush, but the just the issues with the snap count, being a little too antsy trying to time it up off the clap instead of the arm of the center. Yeah, it's a, especially if we have, I mean, they've already got a lot to talk about at halftime naturally. They've got the personnel and the coaching in place to be able to come back in this game and you know, get some offensive momentum going. They really have shown in the second halves of games as opposed to the first, but it's going to start with stopping the Hornets here and just getting their head screwed on right. They have just looked uncharacteristically nervous, jittery, antsy. Again, I don't think being down 20 helps that, but they just have not looked themselves really in any capacity, save for one or two plays, you know, those Fonsby Clyburn runs where they did get something going on the ground. That's really been the only semblance of the normal charges we've seen so far tonight. As the umps uh, took some time to talk something over, it was a flag against the chargers on that one. Or no, we got offsetting penalties, check that. So they were just discussing that. Flags on both sides. They won't move the ball or change the down and distance or anything like that. It's gonna be first and 10 from the 50 as planned. 2.43 to go in the first half. Remember, the Chargers will get the ball to start the third quarter. Single high safety look for receiver set for the Hornets. Here we go. And the Hornets, uh, the quarterback was talking to one of his receivers, maybe not changing the play, maybe just changing one route as they hand this one off. And oh, shedding some tackles is the running back for the Hornets and he's gonna gain about 10 yards. Man, those are tackles that the Chargers usually make. They've made them all season. But I tell you, they just, uh, this Hornets offense and their defense too, 
I think this has just been a different breed than what they've been facing so far this year. I mean, obviously both sides, I only got to meet once. They were in different divisions. They don't even have too, too many shared opponents or at least not shared opponents that they played, you know, at similar enough points in the season to be able to compare. I think this is just a case of two teams that really haven't seen each other, kind of having to play things by ear a little bit in terms of game planning and scheming. And so far, the Hornets have done a better job of it. Though the Chargers win that play, they shut another shotgun run down. I think the Hornets are going to be lucky to have gained a yard as we got a timeout called on the field. Uh, no injured player. I think the Hornets just took one to take one. 155 left to go in the first half. Again, uh, I think this is, I don't want to call it a full-on basketball timeout. It did look like the Hornets called that one. So they're down to one now. And again, on a drive like this, I know they got plenty of time now, but if they take a little too long at the line of scrimmage, you know, get to a point where they have to, you know, maybe change a play or something, run the play clock down, something like that, that timeout could come back to haunt them. Remember, they used one on the very first drive of the game, too, their first two-point conversion attempt, which ended up failing anyway. They took a timeout on that one. So an interesting chess match on that front. They haven't gone back to the hard count either, even though it has only been two plays. And now, yep, ball's going to be spotted on the 39. They don't have to try to gain any All they got to do is run the clock. 155 clock is stopped. It'll start on the snap. Same formation as always for the Hornets. Two wide receivers on either side. They're going to just run this with the quarterback. Uh, I think he thought about throwing it there. Oh, and he gets hammered. Maybe he should have thrown it. Ooh, just took a little too long to decide on that one. Number 23, I think that's Larry Albert delivering the hit on what's technically a sack. It's not going to be a huge, huge sack, not a showstopper like some of the ones the Chargers have notched on their pass drives. They did set them up in, you know, second and 18 sort of positions. This one only going to go for a couple of yards. Third down, actually. Third down and 13 is going to be the call after the Albert sack on the quarterback. But again, I'm not... I'm not totally sure if that was a designed run or if it was just a rollout because the quarterback, like, he lowered his shoulder right as he got the snap and took off like he was just going to straight carry it. But then right as he got around the sideline toward the line of scrimmage, he started kind of squaring up a little bit like he was going to try and let that thing rip. I think Maybe just saw the running lanes closing up and thought about trying to get rid of it as running back almost missed the pitch there, and it's not going to matter because the Chargers are able to knock him down right at the line of scrimmage. 50 seconds on the clock, and... I was about to say I was a little surprised the Chargers didn't take a timeout, but uh, given their offensive struggles so far, I can't really blame them. Looks like both sides are just content to let this run out, but the Hornets will have to punt. There's a difference between the play clock and the game clock of about 12 seconds here on 4th and 13. Or actually, they, knocked that one, they marked that one a yard back, 4th and 14. Though in the grand scheme of things, I'd be very surprised if that one yard came into play here and made some kind of huge difference. But yeah, this they are going to have to snap this one with about eight or so seconds left unless, you know, the officials and the coaches agree to just say, hey, let's let this thing run down. But, you know, at the very least, I would imagine the Chargers might want to punt here as actually, oh, they're just going to sling this and try and catch the Chargers off guard. And as time expires, our cameraman missed it, but you're not missing anything. The pass was incomplete. There was a man open, but it would have been a really tricky throw. There was a safety looming right on top of him. So even if the pass had been completed, I don't think it would have gone for a touchdown. But bold move by the Hornets to try and catch the Chargers napping there. I think it worked, just couldn't quite execute. And the Chargers had the safeties in place to be able to pull that thing out. So an interesting way to end a very interesting and one-sided half. The Chargers facing their biggest deficit of the season down 20 to nothing against the Catawba County Hornets here in Mount Holly, North Carolina. Should be a very, very interesting second half coming up. We got, or actually only 10 minutes on the clock right now. So again, just 10 minutes, usually about 20 minute halftime for now. Looking like it's gonna be half that time, but go get something to drink, grab something to eat. We'll be back in, at this point, around 10 minutes. Hornets on top, 20 to nothing.
All right, everyone, we are back and ready to roll in what is set to be a very interesting and hopefully action-packed second half of play here in the Central Carolina Football League Championship between the number two ranked, or number two seeded, I should say, Catawba Hornets, who lead the number one seeded Chargers of Electric City 20 to nothing here from Mount Holly, North Carolina. The Chargers offense, the number one scoring offense in the league, averaging 34 points a game, has been absolutely stymied in all facets. They have just not been able to get anything going against this Catawba defense, which leads the league in scoring, having only surrendered 66 points on the entire season, 11 games, 10 in the regular season, plus a playoff win over the Charlotte Bengals, who they shut out, I should add. 66 points on the year. It's been tough sledding. We have gotten I mean it's now very easy to see how this is the number one defense in the league I mean they have shut the Chargers down and they I tell you I would not have wanted to be on that Electric City sideline because all those players got a talking to as the opening kick is fielded by I think that's wants to be Clyburn yes it is he's returned kicks pretty far before but it looks like he's going to run out of room here Nice return in the grand scheme of things as we got some late action there between Kenuel Johnson and one of the gunners for the Hornets. No flag thrown. I think it was just a ta tackle that kind of went out of bounds on its own. No personal foul call necessary there. First down and 10 coming up for a Chargers offense that is really going to need to make some adjustments. Uh, they talked a lot during that halftime break again, usually 20 minutes, and we only had 10 here, so that might have cut into things a bit. But I imagine we're going to see Maybe not a ton of changes in overall play calling, but just the, I think the snap count has really been the big thing that's bit them so far. The Hornets defense has used a ton of motion. They've moved their linebackers all over the place pre-snap, sent them up to the line and had them back off, play off, and then run right to the line as the ball is being snapped. Nobody's been stationary, and it has thrown this Chargers offense, and specifically their offensive line, just completely for a loop. They've had some time to talk it over, and it looks like their proposed solution for now is to bring in Wildcat quarterback to Keys Hollings, at least for one play. And you can see those Hornets linebackers just cheating up, moving all over the place. And Hollings gets away from everybody and now runs out of room, and he's reversing field. He might have to throw this away and tries to make one man miss. And after all of that, a lot of running. And it's going to end up going down as, well, for now, a loss of four or five. We got a flag in the area of holding, so this may be coming back even further. Honestly, it it's far enough back that the Hornets might want to think about declining the holding call and just going with second and 15. But again, you saw just penetration immediately by number five of the Hornets. You can tell he's got a yellow sleeve on his right arm. He's pretty easy to spot from up here. He's been moving all over the box, just changing gaps and changing gaps all before the snap. This Chargers offensive line has not been able to get a feel for where he is. And he and really the other linebackers for the Hornets as well it hasn't just been number five. They've all caused havoc in the backfield as the Hornets will take the penalty, so it'll be first down and 20. Again, I thought after the big loss on that one, they might think about, you know, going, eh, let's decline it, set up second and 15, whatever, take the down, but they will not, as you can see that shiftiness again, though this time he got a little too far. It's gonna be an offsides penalty called against number five of the Hornets. No, they say that's a false start. So they, the motion by those Hornets linebackers caused the Chargers to jump which uh, those penalties in particular have plagued them all game. Even when they haven't, uh, you know, they haven't had necess haven't, uh, necessarily had somebody move before the snap, excuse me, it still caused them issues just because all these offensive linemen are having to decide on the fly who they're going to block and who they're not going to block. As a clean pocket here for Hollings, but his receivers might be out of his arm range. And, oh, he... Had a blindside rusher coming in, lucky to get that ball off, but he still got absolutely planted there. And now it looks like he's cramping up, and he's going to need to get stretched out. Did get the ball away, so they avoid the sack. The bad news for the Chargers is that it's still second down and 25. So you had the holding and then the false start that have really pushed them back. And... I mean, at this point, you kind of wonder if it's just one of those drives where, you know, they run it up the middle two times and just 
set up for the punt, try and get it away and prevent a safety. But even then, their punting game hasn't been quite as good as where it usually is. It always, it always is a little bit hit or miss just because protection can kind of break down sometimes on the punt. I don't think they've had one blocked full on this year, but they've come close a couple of times. But so far, the, even the punting game just has not looked right. Second and 25, Mark Littlejohn still on the sideline, so Hollings is going to be the quarterback here. Not quite sure if but not quite sure if we would call it the Wildcat or just a full-on quarterback change. Kind of blurring the lines between both of them. As other than Hollings, they're in their normal set. And did the Hornets jump or are they going to call this against the Chargers? It looked like the Hornets were in the neutral zone, but no, they call out a false start. See what I mean? it's just... And that's going to be second and 30. And so... I mean, they've definitely tried it now a couple of times. That was something I was wondering why they didn't, you know, revisit the hard count a couple of times in the first quarter when the defensive line penetration was getting out of hand to try and loosen the Hornets up, maybe just slow them down off the snap a little bit. But both times they've tried it, they've gotten them called against them as Hollings actually does hand this one off, caught me off guard. That was a really good fake and a really good run here by... I think that, not sure if that's Bobby Kennebrew or not. I don't think it was him. No, that's Larry Albert on the carry. Picking up, yeah, about 20 yards on that one. Still going to be third down and very long, but not near as long as third and 30, that's for sure. It's going to be third and 11 now for Hollings in this Chargers offense. So what do they have drawn up here? Here we go. Whoa, and Hollings mishandles the snap initially, brings it back in, and he's going to take this himself and got the first down. How about that? Man, Takis Hollings just outrunning all that craziness in the defensive box. <laughs> Takes it around everybody and picks up kind of an impromptu first down. Again, I don't know if that was designed quarterback sweep or if he just got the snap and said, okay, the timing is all disrupted. We don't have a prayer of getting this thing off normally. I'm just going to do what I can. Uh, regardless of what happened, it worked as, man, I tell you, it's starting to get chilly up here. Uh, the, You know, we're on a Windows computer. We're streaming this on a Windows computer, so it's got the little weather forecast on the toolbar that tells you the temperature outside. It says that it is 68 degrees and sunny out here. I beg to differ. Oh, uh, man, if you hear my voice wavering a little bit, it's, it's chilly up here. First down and 10 for the Chargers. They hand off to Albert, and Albert lowers his shoulder and picks up a couple of yards. It should be second down and seven or so. And we got some yelling kind of a, I can't tell if that's Chargers on the sidelines talking to some of the Hornets defenders or if the Hornets are talking amongst themselves. I didn't really see anything on that play worth yelling about. It was a pretty... Uh, it was a pretty unnoteworthy play in the grand scheme of things. Again, the, a lot of three-yard runs like that just kind of get buried in the final stat line and everything. You don't quite notice them in the grand scheme of things. Hauling's still in at quarterback, but Little John, he's still got his helmet on. It's not injury-related. He's standing right beside the coach. I think right now they just feel Hauling's mobility gives them a little bit of a better chance to move the ball down the field. Again, at this point, they'll take any spark they can get because they have not been able to get it going so far. Kidabrew and Albert, the running backs here. Second down, and this is actually closer to second and six as Hauling drops, Hallings drops way back, throws this downfield. It's floating and batted up and intercepted. What a play. Man, that was an acrobatic catch there by the defender who was very, being very patient with the turn, rating on some blocks to develop, and they didn't quite get where he needed them to. So an interception thrown by each quarterback of the Chargers now. We got a flag right around the line of scrimmage, and it looks like we might have one way in the offensive backfield too. They're up both in the area of offensive holding. Gonna be interesting to see how they get this one sorted out. It looks like, at least for the time being, the interception is going to stand. Given where those flags were thrown, my guess is that there was a holding call against one of the offensive linemen, and naturally the Hornets will just decline that and take the decline that and take the interception. And now we got one coming out very late. Thrown right as, I think I was number zero of the Hornets past the official, so 
Man, a lot to unpack here. And it overshadows, again, a very acrobatic interception by the Hornets DBs. You had two men kind of over there. The ball floated in the air, allowed the safety to get over there, and he batted it up just in the air, and then good job by the Hornets defensive back of locating that ball on the move and plucking it out of the sky. She said, thank you very much. And it was a, he almost, I mean, he had a, a good chance to catch it, too. It wasn't like it was a bad pass, you know. He had a chance to catch it. And the ref's still discussing this one. That, at least understandable. Again, I've seen three separate flags on this one play. Two in the Chargers backfield. And now that late one that came right as one of the Hornets was heading to the sideline. Nine fifty-five to go here in the third quarter. This is a very, I mean, obviously it's a big call, especially if there's some kind of penalty here that might take the interception off the board. I'm sure the Chargers are hoping that's the case. Well, I know they're hoping that's the case, but I don't know. Nothing to me screams, you know, defensive pass interference or anything like that. We don't have any flags in that area of the field. And shoot, I think I was talking too much. I missed a signal from the referee. They're moving the Hornets up. And okay, now I think they're about to let us know what all happened. The head official's in the area, and okay, this is interesting. The Mark Littlejohn is actually heading back out there, which would imply that the interception is coming off. That would be a huge break for the Chargers if that's the case. Yeah, they're huddling up, so it's... So... Okay, shoot, I, I wish the referee was mic'd up so we could have heard what he was saying, but it looks like we had penalties against both teams. But in the grand scheme of things, we're going to have a holding penalty that's enforced against the Chargers, but they retain possession of the ball, which at the very least gives them an opportunity to pick up a few yards and try and flip the field. To Keys Hollings out as quarterback, Mark Littlejohn in. And check that, they're going to mark this as first and ten. So... Man, very interesting sequence there. The refs took a while to get it sorted out, but justifiably so. There was a lot to unpack. So here we go. First and 10 for the Chargers. Can they get something going on this drive? No movement by that Hornets defense initially as they run up the middle with Larry Albert, and Albert falls forward for a gain of three yards. Again, another one of those sort of invisible plays. Those three-yard runs that everybody just kind of writes off. Those do go down as body blows. I mean, I know that's a cliche thing to say that they pile up over the course of the game. They absolutely do, but I just don't know. I don't know if the Chargers got enough of those in in the first quarter for that to really play a factor so far. I mean, obviously, any running team is going to try and wear the defense they're going up against down, but they just – I don't know that they've run enough offensive plays to be able to – not necessarily take that approach, but to be able to bank on that, that the Hornets are going to run themselves out of gas as, oh, they absolutely, no, they let that one go, and they're going to call this against the Chargers. There was a man in the neutral zone when that ball got snapped, but I think they're saying that one of the offensive linemen of the Chargers moved first. Yeah, by letter of the law, I think that is the call. They're going to talk it over and see, but I do think this one's going against Electric City. Even though the Hornets had a man well across the line of scrimmage. Or no, they do call this against the Hornets. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, by the letter of the law, I think you could say, like, oh, there was movement by the defense, but there was no contact or anything, so they didn't jump. But that one, I mean, you had a guy three yards deep in the backfield. That would have been that would have been kind of ridiculous if they called that against the Chargers, even though technically, I guess, I'd have to – we're getting so deep into the false start versus offside rules. Like I never thought I'd be in a game where we'd get we'd be reading between every single word of that rule of the microscope. It feels like that's what we're doing here, trying to get all this sorted out as the Chargers do pick up a first down there with Bobby Kennebrew on the ground. Not a pretty play, but it gets them the yard or two they needed to move the chains. And they're sitting right at midfield now. But yeah, I just uh I'm going to have to go home. I, this is going to be like my weekend reading. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting there on Sunday morning before church reading every over every single rule about this pre-snap stuff. <laughs> going over it with a fine-tooth comb. 
Oh man, they've uh, they've made me think about this more than I ever thought I would need to. Because <laughs> you know, usually, I mean, in any other game, it's pretty cut and dry. You see a guy cross the line of scrimmage, the ball gets snapped off sides. You see a guy move before the ball snapped on the offensive line. Oh, false start, but. We've reached that gray area, the sort of twilight zone in these calls just so many times throughout this game. <laughs> it's been all over the place. A gain of one on that one. Second down and nine coming up for the Chargers as they move across midfield for, it's not the first time this game, and it kind of feels like it in a sense. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Whoa, and this one goes through the arms of Little John, and he's just going to fall on it. Uh, I tell you, it looked like he might have had a little bit of room to get back up and try and throw that away, but he does the safe thing and prevents a turnover, technically speaking, but at this point, this might as well be a turnover. I mean, this is, man, I hate to say it, but this is one of those plays where you just look at it and you're like, you, you want to just punt now? <laughs> you want to save the 40 seconds or so? Because the odds of picking this up on third down are just so low. So it's going to be third and... Yeah, about, I think, third and 28 is going to be the call. Third and going off our score bug is probably closer to what the fact of the matter is. Ball spotted on the 32-yard line. The Chargers need to get to the Hornets 40. Takis Hollings going to check in as the quarterback. Again, we've seen it a couple of times. His mobility gives them a bit of an advantage in these situations, but he's got pressure in his face immediately. And now is he going to try and throw this? Not yet. And he's technically not sacked. I think he got a yard. And the clock will roll and the Chargers will be forced to punt. So another promising offensive drive going down the drain to the tune of a bad snap. Man, it feels like some of the Upstate Dragons games we called years and years ago. Oh, they couldn't they couldn't hit the side of a barn with a snap, that team. Oh, it was I know the Chargers have had it rough, but no, it can always get worse. The Upstate Dragons were oh my goodness, they had some crazy snaps. And the Chargers are gonna hope for a, or hope against a crazy snap on this one. They've already had their they've already had one of those on a punt. Their first punt of the game got a little wonky, and I think they've had their fill of it from that one play alone. Jesse Terman going to try and flip the field as best he can. Doesn't have the biggest leg in the world, but he's a rugby-style kicker, and his punts have a habit of rolling in the right direction. Though the Hornets have two return men deep. Going to be an interesting chess match formation-wise here. And how many people do the Hornets bring? Just four, it's the low snap. Terman gets the kick off, kind of hit it with the side of his foot, but it does take a nice Chargers bounce as one of the Gunners falls over. Oh, ball is loose, and I think the Chargers have it. Oh, that would be a huge, that is a huge mistake. The Chargers catch a massive break. Oh man, I thought they, I thought the Hornets had a 20 yard return just in the bag. One of the Gunners, I didn't even see who it was. He came in so fast, but he tried to kind of stop on a dime to get a hold of that punt or possibly even prevent a return. He falls over, and then the return man can't bring the punt in because it's spinning too much. And then the same gunner that falls over gets on top of the punt and literally flips the field for the Chargers. They're going to set up shop inside the 30. Best field position they've had so far. Man, that is, I tell you, that's almost poetic. The guy that falls over ends up recovering a fumble on the same punt that he almost wasn't able to defend. Very interesting play. So here we go. First down and 10 once more for the Chargers offense. Ball spotted officially on the 27 yard line. And you can see Cam Delano and Kenny Well Johnson checking off or checking out. Johnson not happy about something. And here we go, Larry Albert has some running room. Albert cuts inside, was taken down from behind. And we got some pushing and shoving after the fact. No flags down. Again, it's a, in a game that's been this chippy, I think it's a good no call on any you know potential personal fouls there. Both sides got to shove in. Larry Albert, though, that's the story so far. The Chargers finally able to get a little bit of a push with this offensive line. Making some running room for the first time this game on this drive and their previous one. They just got to make sure they're getting these snaps in properly. <laughs> oh, speaking of, Little John just going to fall on this one. That 
I don't know what's happening. And we got a flop late by the Hornets. Uh, again, a good no call there by the ref. I think number 16 in the Chargers, like, maybe gives, uh, gave someone a little love tap after the fact, and then he just flopped. He hit his own player. And check that. I think we might have an injured player down now, but during the flop, the he flopping injured. Hornet ran into one of his own guys, and I think that might be who's down. That or yeah. I don't know if we've got an injured player or if everybody's just, you know, gearing up, talking back and forth. But again, just the story of that, it's overshadowed by the flop after the play, but that snap, I mean, that didn't have a prayer. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna rewind my stream, see if I can see anything, but I mean, it's always difficult for a center to snap the ball when he's got a defensive tackle lined up right over him, but that just, I have no idea. That looked like he was snapping a punt almost. That just went way over the head a little John way off to the side they wouldn't I mean you could have had an NBA player an NBA guard at like eight foot tall or whatever jump up and not be able to catch that snap that was uh, I can't imagine that's how they drew it up that's really all I can say as second and one what looked like a promising second and one at that is going to become third down and well, the chain gang still has it at second, and there's an official right there. So maybe they're saying that the Albert run was first and ten instead of second and one. I'm not quite sure. We'll go with what they've got. So this is second and, I don't know, call it 20. Are you kidding me? This one blown dead mercifully for the Chargers. They'll even take a false start at this point. I don't know what's happening. It's the jump and they're screwing up the stats. I mean, once again, just another snap nowhere in the vicinity of Mark Littlejohn. Yeah, I'm watching the replay back now. And yeah, just nowhere near him. I don't know what happened. Second down and I didn't see what the flag was for either. I was updating the down and distance so false start is the call against the Chargers. That one really actually comes back in a good way. They keep the down, even though they do go back a couple of yards. And they've just got it. They've got to get this nailed down. Put Little John under center if you have to. This is getting ridiculous. And they do finally get a snap off. Larry Albert gets the ball, steamrolls forward, and runs into a brick wall. Does pick up a couple of yards to set up third down and... I guess more manageable, but not where you'd like to be in any regard. Third down and we'll call it, uh, my initial estimation might've been off to third down. And I think this is 19. Yeah, I think 19. Gain of a couple on that one for Albert. The Chargers do have a kicker. Andre Talley can boot it, but Again, down 20, a field goal doesn't really help you that much anyway, and this is, I think, still a little bit further out than what they'd feel comfortable having tally kick. Here we go, snap is off. They pitch this one out, and trying to change direction in the backfield is, can't tell if that's Kennebrew or Albert. They were 22 and 23, respectively, so sometimes it can be a little tricky to tell them apart, but Kennebrew, yep, that was him on the carry and just not able to get anything going. Okay, 2.46 left to go in the third. I, you're kind of, I mean, you're on your own side of the field anyway. A punt would probably just go in the end zone. Are they going to go for this, or are they going to punt it? I mean, if you punt, you do have the potential maybe. You'd be standing on the midfield logo. You had, you'd have the potential to pin the Hornets really deep in their own territory. And obviously, you know, fourth down and 19, your chances of getting it are slim to none. But, I mean, this is just the definition of no man's land. And down three scores, you got to give yourself a chance. Do you feel like, if you're the Chargers, do you feel like you have a better chance of picking up this first down or a better chance of pinning the Hornets deep, getting a quick stop, and getting the ball back for your offense? Right now, they want to keep it in their hands. Fourth and 19. Clean pocket. Little John fakes the handoff. Sheds one potential sack. Throws and... Knocked down and incomplete to Keys Hollings, the intended receiver, but I don't think it would have made it to him anyway. That, just the third pass attempt of the game for Little John. That's which I mean, even by Charger standards, that's on the lower side of things. We got a defensive penalty here. That didn't, 
I didn't see if that was, they're going to force this pre-snap or post-snap. This could get very interesting very fast. It does look like right now the Chargers defense is heading out there. But some of the Chargers offensive players are huddling up like they might have a chance to get another play in. Let me check the signal from the official on the replay, see if he gave anything away. Yeah, he didn't really give a signal on that one. He just kind of pointed to the Hornets and said the penalty was on them, but he didn't like motion for pass interference or holding or anything like that. But it does look like the Hornets are going to retain possession. And I think we got a personal foul called against them, so that'll push them back. So in the grand scheme of things, that incomplete pass does kind of function like a punt, albeit unintended, albeit in an unintended way. I don't think they necessarily drew that one up to draw a personal foul for 15 yards after the fact. But that one is basically the same as a touchback now. So with 1.48 left to go here in the third, a very, very long Chargers drive comes up fruitless. And now the Hornets have an opportunity to burn some clock and make this comeback effort even more difficult for a Chargers team that feels like they've been reeling since the really the opening drive. First we've seen the Hornets offense in a while as they're gonna try a receiver screen out to the far side of the field. Got some nice blocks and a better tackle made by Jared Watkins of the Chargers. Got in there and put a good hit on the receiver, but not after he gained six or seven yards. Second down and short coming up. Ball gonna be spotted on the 20, we're gonna do the 26 or the 27. It's gonna be the 27, so it'll be second down and three. All right, here we go. Second down and three. The Hornets really using up that play clock as they pitch this to a wide receiver who's taken down in the backfield, but they're going to call a horse collar against, uh, I think that's, can't quite tell, can't make out the number from here. Good penetration by number 92 of the Chargers, just uh, got a little antsy on the tackle, didn't quite wrap up. That's a horse collar for sure. He didn't mean to be got done. So second down and three is going to go as a first down for the Hornets. Again, maybe not quite the way they drew it up, but they'll take it in what has been a flag-infested game. Tons of penalties on both sides. I mean, you hate to see that in any capacity, but especially in the championship game like this, it's gone. It felt like it feels, it feels, excuse me, just feels like it's gone by really slowly at times because they're having to enforce so many penalties. But, and the, I mean, it's been pre-snap and post-snap. You've had personal fouls called. We gotta I think we this might be a delay of game. Nope, sideline warning against the Chargers, so that won't move them anywhere. There's nobody off the sidelines. Yeah, some of the Chargers kind of looking around like, I don't know that they had anyone there, there but that's there. it's not a penalty yet. It's just a penalty if they do it again. All right, so. Uh, that aside, first down and 10 for the Hornets. Ball on their own 38. They're going to try another screen, and it once again goes over the head of the intended receiver. Kind of had to throw it over one of the defensive linemen, and I think that really affected the throw itself. Second down and 10 coming up now. Just like that. Clock will stop on an incompletion. 44.3 seconds left. I did just get a message from Jordan Adams. I was... I, if you were here in the pregame, I was speculating about whether or not he changed numbers. He did not. Got a message saying he's hospitalized. Hope you're doing okay, man. Hope everything goes well for Jordan Adams, number nine for the Chargers. Not active tonight, plays center and defensive line, which could also explain some of the snapping issues the Chargers have had, especially since one of their other offensive linemen, number 64. I got to grab his name real quick. We haven't, usually we don't call an offensive lineman's name. It's a good thing as... I don't even have a 64 on my roster, which is weird because he's been here all season, but he is not suited up and hasn't been suited up for a while as well.
Clock is rolling now, so the Hornets, I believe they will need to run a play, but this will be the last play of the quarter, barring some kind of crazy penalty. Second down and 10, ball on the 38. Or actually, eh, closer to the 37 as they hand off. And tackle made, but not after some trucking and a possible fumble. The Chargers seem to think they have it, and they do! Oh, ho ho what a way to end the quarter! We've still got 13 seconds on the clock. The Chargers can run a play, but man, that, that is a big change. They get the strip. Man, that one. Again, I feel like we lead off every drive with this, but they got to find a way to get some points. But if they can, they might be able to build just enough momentum into the fourth quarter to make this interesting. But again, that's momentum aside, they've got to find a way to score. Even their good players on offense, they've had more of them in the second half, but there just has been no consistency. As it looks like they've called the fumble off now, flag down on the play, and I think they're gonna say maybe some kind of pre-snap penalty took it off the board, so take the fumble away. Or no, check that, check that. They are gonna give the Chargers the ball. Uh, yep, that's the offensive line out there. And a, and a personal foul called on the called against the Hornets on top of the fact. So the Chargers are gonna have the ball at the 21 yard line. Almost, yeah, pretty much where they were when that last drive of theirs derailed because of the bad snaps. So here we go. We'll see if they got it sorted out. The Keys Hollings back in at quarterback. They did not get it sorted out, but the Chargers are gonna get away with one as we might have a personal foul in after the fact, and we do. That's got to go against Man, that one got a lot to sort out here. And again, just more flags on top of more flags. I don't have the totals in front of me, but I'd be shocked at this point if both teams weren't over 100 yards. I mean, this has gotten ugly. And not, e not even ugly, you know, in a good way, like, you know, you're having a shootout style match. Both teams are scoring and jawing at each other that way. I mean, it's just been slowed down. And it's not even the refs being all ticky tack, like we've done games like that in the past where the game has slowed down because the refs have just called every single possible penalty, haven't let them play at all. Game slowed down because of that. But I mean, this has just been a little bit of everything. We haven't had many ticky tack calls, but it's just been justifiable flags everywhere. A lot of errors on both sides. And again, the don't let that penalty overshadow the fact that the Chargers were staring down another 20 yard loss on another bad snap. I mean, this has just gotten out of hand. You're only as good as your backups, and right now the Chargers' depth definitely being tested. Though, at the same time, I guess they don't feel comfortable going under center either. Usually you'd think that's, you know, the end-all, be-all solution to bad snaps like that. You just put your quarterback under center, and then he literally can't miss the snap. But, again, with the pressure, the Hornets have been able to get on the Chargers' centers so far, specifically with their nose tackles. I mean... I don't know that they feel comfortable doing that as we got, I think the Hornets took a timeout and again, just another stoppage in this game. We've only been streaming for, yeah, our clock says two hours and 10 minutes, but I tell you, it feels like it's been a lot longer. It really does. 5.2 seconds left to go in the third quarter. The Hornets still on top 20 to nothing. Neither side has scored in the third frame. The ball is currently spotted on the, I think the 11-yard line. Yeah, it's on the 11 or maybe on the 10 because they've got one of the chains laid down. So I think this is his first and goal. As we got another chilly breeze coming through on top of everything. Oh yeah, isn't hot air supposed to rise? <laughs> We're pretty high up. Yeah. First down and goal coming up here for the Chargers. Keys Hauling still in at quarterback. They've actually got Bobby Kennebrew split out as a wide receiver. This could be interesting. Kamir Prydock is going to be the lead back. Larry Albert, the fullback on this play. And now we've got um, one of the offensive linemen for the Chargers uh, checking back in with Hollings. Uh, I guess I'd rather him know his assignment than guess on it. Kind of a weird looking turn of events there, though. 
Here we go. Last play of the third quarter. Snap is good, and Prydock might have some running room. Tries to cut this to the outside, and whatever lane was there closed very quickly. And a play that's kind of summed up the game to this point. Looked like there was an avenue, and it just got hammered. So at the end of the third quarter, no change in the score. Still 20-0 in favor of the Hornets. Do the Chargers have the comeback of a lifetime in them, or will the Hornets hang on and close this thing out and win their second consecutive CCFL championship? We'll have to wait and see, but I don't think we'll have to wait long. 15 minutes on the clock, fourth quarter action coming your way in just a moment. All right, we're back and ready to roll. Second down and goal coming up for the Chargers. Low snap, fielded by Larry Albert, but he's not going to go anywhere. Trying to get something going with a stiff arm, but ultimately loses yardage. Just had to get back what he could on that one. Kind of doomed from the get-go. Third down and goal now from the 15. Takis Hollings will remain the quarterback for the Chargers on this one. Mark Littlejohn not out due to any injury concerns. They've just kind of switched them in and out throughout the second half in particular. I think they like Hollings' mobility given how much pressure the defensive line of the Hornets have been able to get on whichever Chargers quarterback has been in there. Clean pockets have been hard to come by. The clock is rolling. It continues to be the Chargers' worst enemy right now. It's kind of been looming over everything in the second half, but now especially third down and goal. If they can't score on this possession, oh, it's I don't want to say it's completely over, but it's going to be a very, very long shot. So ooh, nice block there by Albert as rolling out his Hollings, just desperately trying to find somebody to throw to. Has an open man and can he get into the end zone? No, he cannot, but I think they're I was close enough to the sticks that he might have actually picked up a first down. We got a flag out way, way, not, well, not way, it's like way out on the field, not late in the play. It was late enough to be like something like pass interference, but there wasn't a DB anywhere near the receiver, so they couldn't call that. I don't know what the flag was for. Great, great play by Hollings, who now is, yeah, Hollings is all the way over at midfield. I don't, I'm not sure what he's doing. And he's, Went all the way over to midfield. He did like one stretch and now he's kind of coming back as it looks like that play is going to be walked back. So man, one of the most exciting plays and really one of the only explosive plays the Chargers have gotten all game coming off the board to the tune of what seems to be in the area of a holding call. It's going to be third down and goal or possibly, again, I'm not quite sure if this is goal to go or not. They've got a, they've got a man out there on the one-yard line now, like that's the line to gain, but earlier on when they were on the other side of the field, he wasn't there, and they just had that particular down marker laid down like it was goal to go. So I'm, I'll keep it. I'll change it to third and this will be third and about 19, I think. I'm not really sure if this is goal to go or not. Here we go, Larry Albert the lead back on this one to Keys Hollings, the Wildcat quarterback. Two safeties deep for the Hornets. 
And Hollings going to drop back the pass. Got some pressure to deal with. Rolling out and clean of holding calls now. Oh, but the turf monster got him. Number zero for the Hornets comes up with a sack. And it's going to be fourth down and goal from the 41. I might have seen a team punt on fourth and goal, like not in person, obviously. I think I've seen it once in college. But that might be their bet. I mean, you know, you're down three possessions. You, you can't punt this one naturally. But this is going to be the longest goal to go I've ever seen in person. <laughs> no contest. As it looks like they're going to bring Mark Littlejohn in for this one. He's got the bigger arm. Definitely more of a pocket passer. And they're going to need every ounce of power he can get on this one. And it's going to have to come out quick, too. Fourth down and 39, I think, is the call. 12 minutes to go and counting in the game, too. Got a feeling this is just going to be a straight shot down the sideline. The Chargers have had a lot of success there off of play action is the asterisk on that on this particular play. As they call a timeout, I think they avoided delay a game. They took a long time getting that one sorted out in the huddle. But, I mean, if you're going to use the timeout to get a play straightened out, uh, fourth and 39 is probably the place to do it. Want to make, Definitely want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row for this one. And again, uh, I'd be shocked if this is anything other than just four verts trying to get somebody open down the sideline, maybe between a corner of safety, something like that. And the Hornets, I'm sure, know that too. This is just, you can actually get away with playing, playing prevent on this one, I think. But at the same time, I mean, the Chargers have had success on downfield shots this year, just not really in obvious passing situations like this, and especially when they've gotten to do it off of play action. But... I mean, fourth and 39, there's no point in faking a handoff here because nobody's going to bite on it. You're not going to pick up 39 yards on fourth and 39 on a, on a running play. So here we go. We'll see if they've gotten it straightened out now. Takis Hollings back in the game, this time as a receiver. Larry Albert will be the running back, but I got a feeling he's just going to be in pass protection. Four receiver set, first one of the game for the Chargers that we've seen low snap and Little John just gonna have to bite this. Never had a chance. And man, that I tell you, that's that play right there kind of sums up the entire game for the Chargers. It just has not been their night. The Hornets have absolutely dominated on both sides of the field, but I think the Chargers depth has really been what bit them here. And I mean, it's hard to have a team full of good five, five good offensive linemen, much less eight or 10 that you'd need to have good backups as well. That was just, I mean, I feel like everything that could have gone wrong for the Chargers, offensive, the offensively, defensively, special teams, injuries, seems like everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong at the worst possible time. And barring a comeback for the ages, it looks like the Hornets are going to move on and capture their second consecutive CCFL championship and what I believe would be at least their third. This is a team that's been around for a while. First down and 10 coming up. Again, first time we've seen the Hornets offense in a long time. Ball spotted on the Chargers 40. A touchdown here would just be insurance at this point, but... Obviously, no reason to try and stop scoring. They're not, obviously, we got some time left. They're not taking a knee situation as the Hornets have trouble with a snap now, or a handoff more specifically. There's a whole scrum for the ball. And, oh, that's going to be a personal foul after the fact. I think the Chargers, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, the, yeah, the Chargers might have had that one. Yeah, they got it. And so that is going to be yet another turnover forced by the Chargers defense. So they've held up their end of the deal here. That boy, I think that's that one that a while ago that twisted his leg or whatever. As we've, uh, in an unfortunate development, we've got a stretcher coming out to the Hornets sidelines. Uh, we're not sure who it is. Uh, not sure if it's a player, could be a fan potentially. We just hope they're okay. There's an ambulance on site. They're going to cart them off. I think it's a kid early. Yeah, we don't want to speculate. Not 
can't get a name or a number potentially who that is just hopefully they're okay as geez was that was that the ready for play I, gotta, I, I mean the stretch is not on the field but man that that's cold if they're gonna make them play through that and yeah I think no well no they're taking their time here I don't know if they're running the play clock or not that would be I tell you even if it's not a player you know I mean this is yeah, that's that's cold. Man, they're gonna make them run this thing. So the Chargers offense back out there. First down and ten coming up. Jesse Terman motions out for a potential screen, and that goes through his hands. It's a forward pass, falls incomplete, and the Chargers lucky it did, because that would have been a scoop and score if it wasn't. Right through the hands of Terman, but possibly a good incompletion in the sense that there were Hornets all over that play. I think Terman would have gotten blown up for a loss. So second down and 10, far from the worst thing that could have happened on that play. 11-18 left to go in the game. Again, with the turnover there, again, it would be an absolute monstrous effort with a lot of key players injured on top of it. But this one, statistically speaking, not out of reach just yet. Again, the Chargers defense, they've held up their end of the deal. No points allowed in this half. A couple of turnovers off of fumbled snaps, though this isn't a good development for the Chargers either, starting another offensive lineman. This one, Brandon Bingham, now out of the game as well, as heavy pressure on Little John as he gets rid of this one. Has Terman open, but the pass just hung up in the air a little too long. Terman wants P.I., and I think instead they're going to get a personal foul. Yeah, I mean, that was a, <laughs> there was a lot of contact on that one, but, I mean, it was, the pass was hung up in the air so long, it kind of, it was inevitable. Both guys were running toward the point of contact as quick as they could. But then I think they're going to get a personal foul if not, if that's not P.I. There was a flag out late. I think they're going to get the Hornets maybe for personal foul, excessive celebration, something like that. Though now they're picking up the flag, but they haven't actually like physically waved it off. Yeah, still waiting on an official signal. He just did it over here. Uh, oh, yeah, the, okay, yeah, the ump did it all the way on the other side of the field. I was looking, like, all the players are off screen. I was looking the other way. So it looks like pass interference is going to be the call, and that'll be a spot foul. A good break for the Chargers, but can they take advantage of it? They've gotten, I know in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't look like it, but they have gotten a lot of solid breaks tonight, and they just have not been able to get them sorted out. And so, no, check that, no spot foul. We do have a 15-yarder of some sort called against the Hornets. So it'll be first and 10, ball on the 42 of Catawba. 10.40 left to go in the game, and there's the ready for play, so it'll start rolling here. All right, on first and 10. Little John looking to throw, has time and delivers. And the Hornets are trying to argue for an incomplete pass. Number 17 of the Chargers gets the reception. Completed the process of the catch and that'll give them, nope, not a first down. It'll be second down and one coming up for the Chargers. Again, it, Finally able to get a completion and would have been useful if they'd been able to get some of those earlier on in the game. Again, still not completely out of reach, but the Chargers have to take a timeout here to avoid. They had Cam Delano further down the field. I think he thought that, I think he thought the receiver might have gotten up and gotten further down. But they call a timeout to prevent the potential offensive false start. Or I guess it'd be offensive offsides, actually. And it gives everybody a chance to kind of catch their breath, too. Get everything sorted out. I'm sure the Hornets want to talk things over after giving up a couple of plays on defense. You know, you had the call on the term and wheel route, and then now the 10-yarder. Uh, more than on just two plays, I think the Chargers have gained a lot, a lot more yards than they have on any particular, you know, in any two- or three-play sequence. They gained a lot more yards on that one than they have pretty much all game. The Hornets definitely seem more lax defensively, just body language wise, than they were in the first half. 
9.49 on the clock. Jesse Terman checks in as the fullback on this one. They got Larry Alberts and you know, too many men on the field. Cam Delano was going to go into his receiver. He splits out, or checks out of the game, I should say. Three receivers and two running backs in on this one. On second and one. Usually you think of this as sort of a play action down, but instead we got a straight drop back. Little bit. Little John has time to throw, dumps it off to Albert, well behind the line of scrimmage, and I think he got back to the line. I tell you, Larry Albert, even in what is more than likely going to go down as a losing effort, Albert in particular has had some really good hustle style plays. Nothing that jumps off the stat sheet. He did have a couple of good runs, but. It's the little things like that, that the Chargers and Albert specifically, I mean, he's done a really good job of taking losses like that or plays that would have gone for losses and finding ways to at least get back to the line of scrimmage. Little John under serious duress and he goes down. And again, Little John not quite as mobile as Takis Hollings, who was a receiver by trade. Just didn't have, I don't even know if Hollings could have gotten out of that one. There was a man coming right through the A-gap. I don't want to say unblocked. I think he just got through the line. So on third and one, they're unable to pick up the first down. Fourth down and fourth down and 11 actually coming up. A loss of 10 on that sack. 8.44 to go. This one, probably your ball game, barring another really fast Catawba fumble snap, which we have seen a lot of in this second half, weirdly. They got two safeties very deep here. This might be one of those downs where you kind of, you know, maybe run all stops, just try and catch that defense playing prevent. Go for just the first down rather than the touchdown. Little John back to pass. They leave both running backs in to protect, and they just send everybody to the end zone. This one floats up, and it's incomplete. Kind of had 17 behind the defense for a moment, but Little John just couldn't quite get everything on that ball. Needed about five or 10 more air yards. I think we got a flag out at the snap too. And yeah, everybody kind of seems to be converging back on the original line of scrimmage. So we may have had, I don't know, the Chargers offense still out there. Maybe a false start. Eight ten left to go in the game. Clock is stopped while the referees get all this sorted out. Mark Little John eavesdropping, trying to figure out what happened. And it looks like okay, the discussion was it was a decline a bowl penalty for the Hornets, and they did end up declining it. So that'll be a turnover on downs instead of a potential redo for the Chargers. Mark Little John and a couple other players trying to argue their case, but. The umps go with the, the original call this time around, so the Hornets will take over, or at least they're scheduled to. Actually, both teams have their offenses out there. The Chargers still thinking they got another shot at it. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion on both ends. And they do signal in the Hornets' direction a couple of times. And nope, now, now we've got one signaling for the Chargers. I've never seen that with two different officials signaling for two different teams. That is wild. <laughs> I mean, maybe he just got mixed up and pointed the wrong way. But, yeah, we, we still got a lot of offensive players for the Chargers that haven't come off the field. And after seeing them signal in both directions, I don't blame them now. I mean, this is – you'd think this is pretty cut and dry. <laughs> But this has caused a ton of confusion on both ends as they call for the clock to start running now. And it looks like both sides finally getting it settled in. Man, that was a weird sequence. But it does look like ultimately it'll be first down and 10 for the Hornets at the 43-yard line. Yep, got to make sure to get the snap and pull handoff operation down pat, don't fumble it again. 8-10 left to go in the game. Four wide receivers set for the Hornets. And they hand this one off, no fumble on the exchange. 
as the running back tries to split this one out wide and does, picks up a couple of yards. Nothing crazy, but does move the ball forward. Second down and about eight coming up. And that clock is just going to continue to roll out. Expect the Hornets to use all of the play clock here. 7.50 and counting. We'll probably be well below 7.30 by the time this one gets snapped. And now the Hornets break the huddle. Again, second down and eight ball on the 46. The line to gain is the Chargers 47. And they fake the handoff, try a little rollout, and that one is intercepted. Oh my, the Hornets rolling the dice. Not sure why they threw that one, but it comes back to bite them. And a nice return there by number 14 of the Chargers all the way out to the line of scrimmage. Steven Dubose with the pick, and we got flags out, of course. And an injured player for the Hornets down as well. Man, just so many stoppages in this one. And now we got a little scuffle at midfield too. I mean, this is getting out of hand. As both sides are going to take a moment to get all this sorted out. Both teams have just about vacated the bench. It seems like we got a lot of folks trying to decide if they're going to go in for this or not. And it looks like they will. Here we go. Yeah, I tell you, this is two hours, 33 minutes is our stream time. But it just it feels like it has been so much longer. Six forty. They're actually running the clock during all this too. I don't. I don't think that's intentional. But yeah, the clock's been running. It's at six thirty-five and counting now. And the referee's still talking about. I think that initial flag. I think the interception will stand. I didn't see any flags that would take that off. The one that is down on the field came out, you know, after the tackle. So at the worst for the Chargers, it'd be a personal foul against them. I don't think. There's anything that could like totally say like, oh, we're taking the interception off the board. And again, moreover, I'm just surprised the Hornets through that period. I know they're a team that likes to throw the ball, but you're up three scores in the championship game with less than 10 minutes to go and you're not running the ball. Man, just a strange chain of events. Feel like I've said that a couple of times this quarter, but it's just gotten weirder and weirder with every snap. At least the conflict for better or worse seems to have sorted itself out the referee is still talking there was another flag thrown probably I think during that the midfield scuffle so we probably got one to sort out there I'm trying to think of stuff to talk about is we've got some Hornets laying down on the 25 yard line just out of your line of, what? The clock is stopped now at 551. What, what is this? Yeah. So that's gonna be a flag against the Hornets now. Even their coach seems confused. I mean, is that a, is that a flash mob? I haven't heard of one of those since 2010 or so. Now we got a referee throwing his hat. I mean, this is, yeah, they throw their hats when they run out of flags to throw. I mean, this is absolutely absurd. Man, John Heisman would be rolling over in his grave right now. This is ridiculous. I, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised now if the rest just call this game. Because I don't know how you get all the players back in it after this and focus and say, hey, we got five more minutes of foot. Potentially more than that because the clock was running during everything. It started running again now. It's at five minutes flat and counting. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be shocked if this game went on, honestly. I think the effort 
on the officials end to get everything sorted out would be greater than just calling it a day. And again, I mean, I you'd hate to see what has been a really good season, not just for the Chargers and the Hornets, but I mean, all through the CCFL, we've had a blast calling these games. Down in Liberty, we went, we did one between the Reefers and the Outlaws that was one on the last play of the game. I and mean, we, we've had some really good experiences this year. And I mean, this has just come completely off the rails. I mean, you hate for a season to end like this, but there's no, there's no game afterwards. So there's, this is gonna be it. And man, talk about going out on a low note. This is just, this isn't fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna come out and say it. It's like, especially all this nonsense on the field as that clock continues to roll. We got a whistle now and yeah, they're just gonna call the game, yeah. which I think is the right decision. So that's it. Yeah. And I can't blame the refs one bit, but I mean, this was just a whole, this was, uh, to put it, uh, I mean, all I can say is that this was definitely one of the games of all time. That, that's about all you can say. This was one of the games of all time. They definitely played football. <laughs> yeah, that's about all I can say is they at least seem to have resolved some of their differences and are shaking hands at midfield. But man, what a... Oh, man, you, I mean, it's a championship. You always hope for a better game, and it's one thing for it not to be competitive, but for them to literally not even finish the game. I mean, come on. So your final score here from Mount Holly, North Carolina, the Catawba County Hornets win their second consecutive Central Carolina Football League championship by a 20 nothing to margin over the Electric City Chargers. That is going to do it for us. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good evening, everyone.